today from Columbia Pictures, it's Captain Midnight. The first of 15 weekly chapters initially screened in theaters February 15, 1942. In true cliffhanger style, it ends abruptly at the precise moment of imminent danger. Will the day be miraculously saved just in the nick of time? Find out and watch this Pizza Flicks cliffhanger serial marathon. Until the next time, may the sauce be with you. and aviation's greatest hero flies again in a one-man war against crime. The odds seem unsurmountable, yet his courage never flags. Single-handed through fog and sleet and snow, he daily risks his life in the cause of justice. And while he lives, the underworld dares not rest. Attention, Squadron S-1. Objective reached. Release your bombs. Squadron 72, attention. Field clear. Take off immediately. Contact enemy bombers and bring down. One, number seven calling. Return to headquarters immediately. Imperative. Very well, sir. I'm reporting to Major Steele at once. Keep after it. Well? One of the raiders was shot down, Major Steele. At last, what did they find? The pilot was killed, sir. The bomber was U.S. made, but there was nothing to identify either the ship or the dead man. Anything on the body? Only this scrap of paper, sir. It was all they found in his pockets. Well, this isn't the government code. Have it sent to headquarters, decoded and examined thoroughly. Yes, sir. And uh, just a minute, Lieutenant. 
Have they succeeded in locating Captain Albright? Not yet, sir. Albright's former experience in the service will be invaluable to us in this crisis. He has volunteered to help if needed, and they must be found. Yes, sir. I'll keep the radio boys at it. Tell where are the others? They're chased by federal planes. Number 11 was shot down. Now get this crate out of sight in a hurry. Most of the targets were hit, sir, and the planes landed at their various stations safely, except pilot number 11. His plane was shot down and he was killed in the crash. Father, another one... Quiet, Curie. Did the fool have anything on him to hurt us? The authorities found nothing to identify the plane or the pilot, sir. Any further orders? Not at present. Ivan Shark has spoken. Who can that be? Oh, just one of the boys. We'll soon see. Why, it's Martell. He'll have news. Number seven reporting, sir. All the targets assigned to me have been bombed. Number 11 was shot down and... I have a report on that. Were you followed? No, sir. Good. I have a new assignment for you, an important one. I'm placing it in your hands because you've proven your ability. See that you live up to my expectations. I'll do my best, sir. Now listen closely. John Edwards, an inventor whom I've had investigated, is perfecting a rangefinder for naval and aerial rifles that will revolutionize modern warfare. I want his drawings, blueprints, and any working models that he may have. If necessary, make Edwards a prisoner, but don't harm him seriously. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Where do we find him? He lives with his daughter. All the data's on that paper. Memorize and destroy it at once. Do not fail me. Your will is as good as accomplished, sir. Radio room? I put Martell on the Edwards job. Broadcast to all operators to stand by for orders. I'm in here, dear. Oh, I was worried about you. Have you seen the paper? Yes, I heard the news over the radio. It looks bad, Joyce. What about your invention, the rangefinder? They'll try to get that, it's certain. You're not safe here, Dad. Now, you stop worrying, my dear. I'm taking precautions and sending the model to Captain Albright for safety. I'll put my drawings in the wall safe for the time being. Don't you think we should have police protection? No, I don't think that'd be wise. We don't want it known that we have anything to conceal here. Now, you know where Albright is. If anything should happen, you can get in touch with him by long distance. He'll come at once. Then notify Major Steele at government headquarters. I'd better get out of the post office and register this at once. Oh, don't bother, Dad. I'll go. Well, thank you, dear. Should we stop her? No. If the break, she's leaving. The job will be easy if there aren't any screaming women about. All right, Slick. Come on.
Nothing to get excited about, Edwards, if you listen to orders. Not excited, and I'll listen. What do you want? We want the plans and the working model of your rangefinder, and we want them in a hurry. I'm sorry to disappoint you. You don't think I'd be fool enough to keep them here? That'd be silly, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I'm just silly enough to think you've done just that. Now quit stalling, Edwards. Those plans are in that safe. Open it up. I want to look, see. Insurance. Now hurry, that girl may come back. All right, Slick, get that box open. Well, that's a cinch. I can open that piggy bank with my hands. I don't care how you do it, get it open. We better beat it. Here comes Edward's daughter back. What about Martell and Slick? They'll handle her. Let's scram out of here. Boys have left. That means trouble. That does it. It's all yours, Martel. See who that is. We may have another fight in our hands. It's a girl back again. Must we grab her, too? Not unless we have for too much trouble. Get in there, quick. She's calling for help. No, listen. You might learn something valuable. Long distance? Get me Captain Albright at Carmen, Nevada. I'll hold the line. Hurry it, please. Thanks. How much speed do you think your new supercharger will give an airplane, Captain Albright? I can't tell, Chuck. As soon as I get it installed, I'll take the plane up for a test. You ain't gonna test nothing for the next day or two, Captain. According to my weather determinator, there's gonna be plenty of storms all the way from here to the coast. <laughs> Mother, old boy, maybe your instrument isn't quite accurate. It looks worthless. Worthless nothing. It's accurate, all right. There's a big storm coming. I've been picking up government reports, and they all agree. <laughs> Gee, that's funny. I thought nobody knew we were here. Hello? Yes, put them on. No one does except John Edwards. Because of the invention he's working on and its value to the government, I gave him my location. He wouldn't call except in an emergency. Yes? Yes, Joyce? What's that? I don't know. I can't tell. The safe is open and stripped clean. Operator! Operator! What is it, Captain? Well, what's wrong? Edwards has been carried off. His safe has been robbed and his plans are gone. I just heard his daughter scream and then the phone went dead. Oh. Chuck, radio major Steele, tell him to send some men over to the Edwards' home. Tell the major I'm flying in at once. Hey, but you're not talking to the storm, Joby. You can't get through. I've got to get through. I didn't tell you that whole coast area is blanketed in fog. Will you stop the chatter and get that claim warmed up? I've got to change clothes. All right, I'm going. A-12 calling B-7-6. Now, we're going to give you a break and take you to your father. Where is he? Well, that's a long story. <laughs> Don't shoot you fool, you'll have the cops after us. Swim out of here, quick. Calling Captain Albright. Consolidated field, calling Captain Albright. Something must have happened. He'd surely answer if he were all right. Well, we've got to contact him and turn him back. It's suicide to try to land in this fog. Keep on trying. Consolidator Field calling Captain Albright. Come in, Captain. Major Steele calling. Come in. Consolidator Field calling Captain Albright. Albright? That's the man the Edward girls telephoned to. Who is he? I don't know, but we've got to find out. Quiet. Captain 
Albright answering consolidated. Captain Albright answering consolidated. Come in, consolidated. Consolidated answering Albright. What's your position, Captain? Give your position. Come in. Estimated position 100 miles north of you. Altitude 5,000. Fog and some rain. Visibility zero. Give me a report on landing field there. Come in. It's impossible to make landing here. The entire district is blanketed. Come in. I've got to come in there. What's your ceiling? Come in. Less than 200 feet and getting worse. Impossible to land. Let me talk to him. All right, this is Major Steele. There's no chance to land here without crashing. You'd better turn back at once. I've got to land there, Major. Tell him to clear the field and turn on the floodlights. I'll call when I see the lights. Come in. Don't be a fool, all right. You can't get through, I tell you. You better turn back. Come in. He's cut off. Try to raise him again. Get out to the field and find out who Albright is and what his connection is with John Edwards. Well, what's the use? He's as good as dead if he tries to land. I want to know who he is, dead or alive. Now get moving. That government man being there makes it doubly important. Do as I say. Yes, sir. Yes, Father? Something has happened. I have to get into the manor's makeup again. Oh, Father, those disguises of yours always worry me. Nonsense. I haven't been caught yet, have I? Well, there's always a first time for everything. You worry too much because I'm your father. Come, help me. What do you want me to do? Get the manor's outfit, of course. Really, Father, I don't know what you have in mind. Of course you don't. If you did, you'd be running the place and I'd be getting the suit. Oh, you're impossible. <laughs> it's all right, Fury. You can go. Mr. Manners will call on you shortly. All right to consolidate it. All right to consolidate it. Come in. Consolidated answering all right. What's your position? Come in. Estimated 10 miles north of you. Altitude 1,000. Show your light. Tell him to turn back. It's sheer murder to let him land here. Turn back, all right. You haven't a chance. Show me your lights, I tell you. Imperative. Running short of gas. Show your lights. Better follow his orders. But he'll be killed. I can't handle him. Throw on the floodlights and clear the field at once. Force landing. Stand by with the crash truck. Order everyone out. Plane coming in. Force landing. Oh, there must be some way to stop him. Not him, my dear. He usually falls through. Keep on trying. Consolidated. I'm circling over you now, catching the glow of the light. Altitude 600. Better not risk it. Nosing over for a landing. Here I come. Oh, it's no use, Major. He's landing. Well, let's get out there. I'll be outside if you need me. You better stay at your post. Give me Charlie. Nonsense. You'll have a good chance now. The fog is lifting. You certainly were lucky, Captain. It looked hopeless just a few minutes ago. Oh, it wasn't bad, Major. How about your father, Miss Edwards? Any further work? Nothing more. And I'm worried to death. Naturally. Well, my car is right here. We'll talk as we go. Captain! What is it? That's one of the men that 
tried to carry me off. What do you make of it all, boy? I don't know yet, but I intend to find out. Get in, we're gonna follow. See if you can get a little closer, Major. I'll try and wing him. Just knocked out. Give me a hand with him. We've got to work fast before this man comes to. Is this one of the men that grabbed you? No, I'm sure it isn't. It was the one that jumped out. Well, he's made a getaway by now. Perhaps we can make this one talk. Look, Major, I don't want this man to see me. I think maybe I can persuade him to tell me everything he knows. I can't sanction anything that will reflect upon the methods of the United States Army. You can trust me not to do that, sir. I'll assume full responsibility. Now, here's what I mean to do. You and Joyce take the man to your office, and later on tonight... Yes? I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, could I speak to Major Steele? He's not in. What is it you want? Well, I wanted to make inquiries about, uh, about John Edwards. What about him? Are you a friend of his? Not exactly a friend. An acquaintance. I met him at the Inventors Club. Talked to him about a project he had in mind. Found we had much in common. You see, inventions are my business. I called on him tonight. Found the house closed and the guard at the door. When I asked questions, I was referred to Major Steele. You see, I thought he might be able to give me some details about Mr. Edwards' invention. Sorry, sir. There's nothing we can tell you tonight. Oh. oh, sorry. Well, thank you for your courtesy. Oh, uh, you might give my card to Major Steele and tell him I'll try to get in tomorrow. Very well, sir. You better talk. It may save you from a murder charge. Murder? You can't pin a murder on me. I ain't done nothing. Captain Albright, who was in this car when you fired on it, was killed. I didn't shoot. It was the other guy. You were with him. That makes you equally guilty. You better tell us who he is. If I ain't talking, I don't know nothing. Where are you taking? I tell you, I ain't talking. I don't know nothing. All right, all right. Sit down, Miss Edwards. It won't be long. You can go home, Lieutenant. I'll lock up. Yes, sir. Now well, then, you better talk and talk fast. Who's the leader of your organization? I don't know. I never seen him. Who gives you your orders? The man I was with tonight. What's his name? He hasn't got a name. We go by numbers. He's number seven. Where was John Edwards taken? I... I can't tell you that. I don't know. Then you'll have to accept the responsibility for the death of Captain Albright. <laughs> you can't make that charge stand up. What can you do to me? I shall do nothing, but you will receive a visitor at midnight. He will be your judge and your executioner. Mr. Midnight? What do you mean? What's going to happen? What's the idea? 
have reason to know, Captain Midnight, by past reputation. Now you see him in person. I am Captain Midnight. And your gang can't save you now because I mean to eliminate you. Then there will be one less traitor to deal with. No, no. Stop, I'll, I'll tell you. Talk fast and only the truth. Where is John Edwards? In a ranch house, three miles north of the village of San Lobos. Go on. I want the exact location and description of the place. It's a small ranch set back off of the road. It has a sign so you'll recognize it. It's a white circle painted on the roof. All right, come on, sit down. Are you sure that's all? Yes. You'll have to come through with a key to your code, Edwards. The measurements and specifications given here are meaningless. If you expect me to help you read them, you're a greater fool than you look. Those plans belong to my country. Oh, your loyalty is commendable. But we have means of persuading people to talk. Even such ardent patriots as yourself. Talk, Edwards. Go ahead. I'm not afraid. prisoner. He'll probably tell all he knows. I'm going to have the ranch house destroyed from the air before it's raided. From the air? But you'll alarm the whole countryside. Don't question my order. I want to alarm them, terrorize them. Let them know my plans are not to be interfered with. Take Edwards with you and clear out. Yes, sir. Yes. We'll remove all documents. It will be done at once. Morton, give me a hand. Help me pull these up. We got to scram. He's crazy. Who cares what you think? Go in and get him out of there. Well, what is it now? I haven't got time to explain. Orders from the boss. We got to scram. Order! Over, I'll let you have it. I'll take that prisoner. Let him have him. All right, take him. Reach. Iron. Mr. Your friend or enemy? Friend. Why, they've got my briefcase containing my plans. I'll take the briefcase.
here is the captured inventor. Can he have escaped the gang's vengeance? Or is the law prepared to seal his fate? And what about Chuck and Dickie? Can they escape the evil actions of Ivan Shark? Don't miss the stolen rangefinder. Next week's exciting chapter of Captain Midnight. <laughs> Zero, he brings his plane to safety through the fog and goes into action against a nationwide crime ring. But when inventor John Edwards is kidnapped, Midnight tries to rescue him with disastrous consequences. Captain Midnight is finished. Yeah, we'll stop off at hideout number 12 and notify him. Take the wheel, Gardo. Right. understand why I don't get a report. Maybe this is it. Come in, S-1. Important. Come in, S-1. S-1 ready. Go ahead, number seven. Destroyed objective successfully. Operators in car with Edwards a prisoner heading toward hideout as planned. Well done, Martel. Your report is very gratifying. They haven't finished. Captain Midnight's on the back of their car and I'll take them right to our hiding place. The fools, the idiots! Father, Quiet! Stop them! They will ruin all of us! Bomb them! Do anything but stop them! Do you understand? Okay, here I go. And now we're traveling in class. Number seven is acting as escort. Come on, 
another one like that and he'll rub us all out. Is he crazy? We'll get to 12 in a hurry. We'll radio the boss and find out what this is all about. The radio's spitting like a tomcat. Oh, take it easy, Tony. That's what we stopped for. Our news will quiet him. Number eight, calling S1. Number eight, calling S1. Come in, S1. So at last you call in. S1 in person. Come in, number eight, fast. Set yourself, Chief. I got news that'll knock you over. We've eliminated Captain Midnight. He went up with a hideout. Come in. Is that so? Well, listen to this, you fools, idiots. Captain Midnight is there with you now. You brought him in yourself on the back of your car. Get him or don't come back. But boss, boss. Well, you all heard him. Why, the boss is nuts. It couldn't be. That was why Martel was giving us the works. He was trying to warn us. Well, let's get out of here and find him. Tony, watch this guy. Come on, sit down. Get her out and find him. There's no time to explain. Get to Major Steele's office and stay there under his protection. I'll hold him off while you make your escape. Hey, man! Come on, he's in here! I just escaped from a gang of cutthroats. I'm on my way to government headquarters to protect my invention. Well, that isn't a new one. But I will argue. Give me a driver's license. I don't get it. That's Edwards, all right. But where's the gang? He made a getaway at Dope, and the cop nabbed him for speeding. As soon as he turns him loose, we'll pick him up and head for number seven. You're lucky. If I didn't think you was crazy, I'd take you in. Thanks a lot, officer. Cargo. It's Slim and Spot and they got Edwards. How come? The other boys had him. I'll explain later. Now we must work on Edwards. I'll question him from my usual station. You stand by in case he gets impetuous. Have him brought in. All right, bring Mr. Edwards into the Sanctum Sanctorum. Well, Mr. Inventor, I'll be brief. I've 
possess your blueprints and data of your recent invention. Unfortunately, they're in code. You are here to decode them for me. They belong to my government. I'll do nothing to help you steal my invention. I warn you not to be hasty in making a decision. My methods of handling stubborn ones are not gentle, I assure you. You don't frighten me. If you kill me, my secret dies with me. Too bad. In a little while, he'll talk. Yeah, but in our business, you must be ruthless to exist. Oh! Hello, Major. You're late, Captain. You had me worried. Discover anything worthwhile? Plenty. You know, we're dealing with a well-organized gang led by one called S-1. They have several hideouts, all equipped with up-to-date radios. Well, that's important. I'll put the staff to work with directional finders. We might run them down. No, but that'll take time, Major. You know, I'm sure Edwards could tell us plenty. I'd like to question him. So would I. Where is he? Why, he should be here. I got him away from the gang and told him to report here at once. Surely you can see it's useless. Decipher your blueprints for us. Don't let your exaggerated patriotism bring death upon you. I'll tell you nothing. Pardon me. Yes? Yes, speaking. The boys and me have got something mighty big for you. Spell it, and it better be good to offset your recent failure. Well, get a load of this. On the way back, we stopped off at Edward's house and cleaned it out. We found a full description and the location of Albright's hideout in Nevada. And best of all, Edward sent a model of the invention up there. That is big news, number eight. Take what men you need. Fly to Albright's place. Bring back that model. Capture or kill Albright or anyone who opposes you. I'll clear the plane for you. Right. Well, what's his reaction? Did he give us a couple of pats on the back? Plenty. Slick, you stay here. Boys, I'll tell you on the way out. We got a job to do. Get to the radio room. Give orders to clear a plane for number eight and his men. Hurry. Yes, sir. Surely you're not going through with this plan to kill Captain Albright. He has nothing to do with all this. He's merely my friend. That's his hard luck. He has what I want and is in my way. I can't sacrifice an innocent man. I'll tell you what you want to know. Now you're showing good judgment. Everything's Jake. The plane will be ready for him. It doesn't matter much now. Edwards is seeing things my way. He's going to decipher his plans for us. That's swell. Pay attention. You may have to work on them. All right, Edwards, start talking and talk plain. We'll check as you talk. Well, uh, the code of my plans is based on the dial of the telephone. I don't get it. The combination of numbers and letters. For instance, as you see, there are three letters to each number, starting with two. In the code, the first number tells which of the three letters to select. When a letter only appears, the corresponding number can be very easily determined. There you have the secret of all my plans. Hello? Well, Martell, do you get it? No, don't you? Look, start over again and slower. It's a little complicated. Well, the code to my plans, as I said, is based on the dial of the telephone. Dad! Dad! What's the matter? Can't you talk to me? Cancel that plane flying to Albright's ranch to destroy him, and I'll work for you day and night. It's too late to cancel it. Besides, I want that model of your invention. Now get on with your work. No, I refuse. Torture me if you will, but I won't do anything more to help you. Help! Help! Dad! Major, the only thing we can do is lay low and wait for them to make a break. Major Steele talking. I just heard from Father by phone. He couldn't talk directly, but I heard enough to know he's a prisoner and is being tortured to make him decipher his plans. They're sending men by plane to, to get Father's model from Captain Albright's Nevada home. Don't worry. They won't harm your father until they get that invention. I'll put the entire force to work. They'll find him. All right, stay close to your phone. Well, Albright, 
It's up to you to save that model. Finding Edwards is my part. They've got a head start on you, so you'll have to hurry. I'm betting my plane is faster than theirs. Now, uh, radio the ranch and put the boys on their guard. If I get the bricks, I'll bring back some of the gang with me, and maybe one of them will sing, and we'll get to the leader of this outfit. Well, good luck to you. Thanks. Get after Edwards. I think the captain would let us know how he come out on that Edwards business. <laughs> how can he when you keep taking the radio apart? <laughs> well, I wouldn't if it was working. Remember, the phone's out too, and if the captain wanted us in a hurry, why, you'd be in tough luck. There. Can't you hear that plane? Mm -hmm. You got a buzz in your head. Here, hand me that wrench. No. Albright's landing field is over that hill. Well, there's a shortcut we can go through and surprise him. Well, what about the plane? Oh, it'll be all right. Come on. Albright calling A-12. Albright calling A-1-2. Come in, A-1-2. Hurry up, Vicky. You're the most aggravating person I know. Well, it's all finished. All we got to do is install it here. Give me a hand. I'll do anything to get this thing done. Right that screw up over there. All right, right here. There it is. Good as new. Albright calling A-12. Come in, A-12. What did I tell you? It's the boss trying to get us. A-12, A-12, calling Captain Albright. Go ahead. Come in. Chuck. Hello, Chuck. Watch out for some men going to attack. Should be there by now. Protect Edwards' model. Come in, A-12. Some men are here now, Captain. Chuck, Chuck, come in, A-12. Come in, A-1-2. Watch him, we gotta locate that invention. Shark himself. Can this man's cruelty be stopped? Can the law prevent his crimes? He seems to have perfected his art, that of criminal disguise. Don't fail to see his villainous actions in the captured plane, next week's revealing chapter of Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight could withstand the onslaught of Shark's gang. 
Yet, when he escapes and returns to capture the ringleaders, they set a trap for him. Get through, now locate that invention. That's a plane, sure. That's all bright as sure as you're born. Now, this is our chance to finish him. Gordon, get that truck and keep him from landing. Great, he won't land on that for you. Come on, we can't watch him. We've got to locate that invention. I haven't got the heart. Well, there ain't much to tell. I just ain't as good as I thought I was. <laughs> no, no, I mean, what did they do? They must have put the pressure on Edwards and he told them the model was here. Listen! Major Steel to cover every known landing field. The radio's out of commission. Those birds... You have to fix it. Number six calling S-1. Number six calling S-1. My answer still is and always will be. No. Now kill me and get it over with. Well, when you come to the radio, sir, play 27 reporting. Maybe he ain't gonna answer, I hope. S-1 answering number six. Come in, number six. We reached Albright's place and knocked off the caretakers. We were searching the place when a plane arrived. We tried to wreck it, but a pancake to a safe landing. Come in, S-1. Of course you killed Albright. We never saw Albright. Out of the plane came Captain Midnight, guns blazing, followed by ten men armed to the teeth with machine guns. There was nothing left to do but beat it for home. What are your orders? Set ship down on field 13. Wait there for orders. Am I, Brainy, or am I? I saved our necks. Congratulations. I couldn't have told a better lie myself. <laughs> hey, look, we better let Edwards go. Sooner or later, they'll trace him to us. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Instead of letting him go, we'll force him to work with us. But he can't take much more. You'll pass out. He has a daughter. Through her, we'll make him act sensibly. And she's guarded day and night. Your lack of confidence in my ability is disappointing. I get some men and meet me at the manor's office. Five oh six. Now hurry. Get ready, Camp. They're coming in. Major Steele is ready. Go ahead, Captain Albright. Model safe, Major. Gang escaped in a plane and headed for Los Angeles. Now here's the description of the plane: a tri-motored bomber, model X ninety two. Now if the plane is located, your men are not to go near it until I arrive. Any word from Edwards? Come in. No trace of him yet. His daughter well guarded. Report here as soon as possible. Taking off at once and bringing model with me. Come in. All right, hurry. Come on, wrap up the model. That house is guarded like a government mint. You'll never get in. To the contrary, the girl will welcome me when I offer her the opportunity to be reunited with her father. Get her on the phone for me. The wire may be tapped. It is, but by our number nine. If you report anything of interest, do as I say. Miss Edwards, this is Major Steele. Oh, hello, Major Steele. How are you? Any news? We've made contact with the men who are holding your father. 
We need your help in carrying out our plan. Are you game? Of course. I'll do everything I can to help. I am sending out our ace operator, a Mr. Manners. He'll be there at 7 sharp. Don't answer the phone or contact anyone until he arrives. Can I depend on you? Certainly, Major. I'll do just as you say. Are you sure Dad's all right? He's absolutely secure. Before many hours, you will be with him. Goodbye. See how easy things are when you use your brain? I got to hand it to you, Chief. That'll do fool anyone. I closed my eyes and I thought old man Steele was in the office. Now, this is the plan. I'm going to bring her down here. And when she arrives, you men are too. We've covered every landing field within a radius of 10 miles. That plane didn't land at any of them. Well, that means they've got a hidden airport somewhere. Wherever it is, we must find it and destroy their squadron of bombers. Right. Now we'd better phone Miss Edwards. You'll have to stall her somehow about her father. Well, that's a tough job, considering we haven't even got a trace of him. Uh, get me the Edwards home on the phone. I don't know why you're all hit up, Burns. You heard him. Major Steele's orders. Government business. Yeah? Well, just the same, I'm getting to a phone. You stay and cover the place. That man, the driver, he's the one that... Oh, yes, yes, I know. He was one of the gang. But now he's working for me. <laughs> that is the government. He's our content. You understand? Uh, yes. Well, the report is the Edwards wire's been cut, sir. So, no need to worry, huh, Major? My men are reliable. Well. Oh, Burns, I was expecting a call from you. What happened out there? All right, all right. Too late now. Get back to the post and stay there until you're relieved. Well, what happened? Some elderly man by the name of Manners has left the house with the girl. Says he was acting under my orders. Oh, we're right back where we started again, with the girl in their hands. At least we have the name of the man. Manners. Manners. Seems to me I've heard that someplace. He certainly wouldn't be dumb enough to use his real name. That'd be asking too much. Pardon me, Major. I believe he did give his right name. What? Yes, he's the man I told you about that visited this office. I think I have his card. Well, go get it at once. Yes, sir. Seems too good to be true. Yeah, well, even if it is, don't count on it helping us too much. Here's the card, sir. Carl Manners, attorney at law, patents, finance, 506 finance building. We'll round up some operatives and raid the place. Lieutenant, give the necessary orders. Yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute, Lieutenant. Oh, pardon me, Major, but I believe this is a job for Captain Midnight. If we raid the place in numbers, it may mean the death of the girl. Let me try it. All right, have your own way. But report to me as soon as possible. Right. I wonder what's holding them up. I'm hoping they don't come. I don't believe in it. All right, beat it. They're on the way up. Here we are, safe and sound as I promised. You'll soon be with your father. Come in, Miss Edwards. Sit down. There may be a slight wait. the door. To secure us against interruption. All right, my man, my bargain is completed. Now do your part. Produce Mr. Edwards. It won't be long. What? Hello, number 22 reporting. The girl is here and the papers are ready for delivery. How about shipping Edwards over here? All right, we'll wait. Be right here. Well, what's eating you, lady? You never telephoned. Your thumb was holding down the hook all the time. I'm getting out of here. Oh, stop, stop. You ain't going anywhere. Let me go. Who said what you're wrong? This man is working for me. I don't believe any of you. I'm leaving. Hold it. We'll stop the argument and take the girl over ourselves. I see. I foolishly walked into a trap. Why, you double-crossing hound, I'll have your life for this. Go. Oh.
man that brought you here. Where did he go? In that closet. He locked the door, but he was trying to help me. I'll believe it when he proves it. Why, he's gone. Certainly. Nice arrangement. Do you still think he's trying to help you? No. Here's the wig he wore. Disguised, eh? That means I missed a big one of the gang. Perhaps their leader. You're disguised, too. Who are you? My identity can wait until I can get you to a safe place. He beat you all as usual. It is useless to proceed further until we definitely dispose of this Captain Midnight. I have a plan that cannot miss. We'll use the plane they're looking for. I'm willing to sacrifice many planes to be rid of this menace. Bang! Radio the men to Field 13. I have work for them. Yes, Master. Martell? Yes, sir. You come with me. I'll use your voice. The rest of you stay here at headquarters. Too bad, Albright. You arrived too late last night to be in on the excitement. <laughs> Captain Midnight arrived in time to save Miss Edwards. But the man we believed to be the leader of the gang got away. Well, I'm sure if he got away from Captain Midnight, I wouldn't have been of any hope. If you gentlemen are carrying on this act for my benefit, you're wasting your time. I've known for some time that Captain Midnight and Captain Albright are one and the same. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder we fail, Major. Evidently, we're very bad actors. Well, pardon me, sir. A report from Operative 22. Let me have it. Yes, sir. Listen to this. Plane described by Captain Albright, located on field off Danville Pike. Now being serviced by three men. Likely take off soon. Awaiting orders. I'll arrange for planes. Let me go, Major. The boys have my plane waiting. I can be over the field in 15 minutes. Now, if their plane is still there, I'll fly it in or follow it if it takes off. Notify 22 to stay away from the plane. Well, what are you waiting for? I'll take care of Miss Edwards. Right. And uh, don't forget to phone the office. As soon as I have news. Get that thing out of here. Well, did you finish? Yeah, she's loaded for bear. Why don't we take off? We can outrun most any ship. Why sacrifice it? We'll follow Shark's orders. If they work, we'll destroy Captain Midnight like that. That must be him. It is him. Well, that's just dandy. Go and get the Billy Do. Come on, Morton. Hurry up. The job's on. All right, now stand by for a getaway, Martell. We'll entice him down. Careful. Don't fall with that. We'll be scattered all over the field. Don't worry. like this part of our secret squadron is arriving just in time, Captain. Three of them are making for the plane in a hurry. Secret squadron, my eye. They have squatted us, that's what. Likely get on our tail and blow us out of the sky. What are you laughing about, Icky? I ain't laughing. Hold tight, I'm nosing over. Hurry it up, Borkman. He's diving for a landing. All right, Captain Midnight, you can have our plane. With Ivan Shark's compliments. Let's beat it. Scram, I only gave it five minutes. Too late. Our birds have flown and left their wings behind them. I didn't expect them to wait. It's a break that they left the plane. I'll fly it in. You follow and keep me covered. Well, you heard him, Shorty. Get at them controls.
Watch the fireworks. is really fast, Dickie. I can't keep up with her. All you can do is your best. Keep trying. Shock from doing his evil deeds? And what about Edwards? Can this master scientist escape the iron bands of Shock's deadly embrace? See it all in Mistaken Identity, next week's smashing episode of Captain Midnight. Shark attempts to kidnap Joyce, Midnight interferes, but his efforts to capture the master criminal expose him to certain death in a bomb-laden airplane. Break too soon. Look. Gosh, I thought the captain's chute would never open. I bet he thought so, too. You gotta hand it to that guy. He can get out of anything. Uh, he's not out of this yet. We'll finish him when he lands. Hurry up! The men in that car are heading toward where he'll land. What do we do? Just watch, like the captain ordered. He's going to land. Get over on that field fast. Stay up and follow that car. See where they take him. That's using your brain, son. That's what I meant. Well, we missed them again. Oh, they can't be far. I never took my eyes off this spot. 
I'm not dropping those guns. Now get in the car, all of you. You help that man out. Shame on you, Icky. There are only four of them. There aren't four men living that could beat Captain Midnight in a fight. All right, load them into the car. Look, the cops. Let's grab. No, you idiot. They'll catch us short. Let me handle it. What's going on here? Plenty, officer. We caught this crook after a terrific battle. He stole our plane, wrecked it, and sent our pilot to his death. Great suffering wildcats. Who is he? You mean to say you don't know the infamous Captain Midnight, the Sky Bandit? Why, the police have been searching for him for months. Never heard of the guy, but we'll take him in. All right, boys, carry him to the car and take no chances with him. Come on, get him to the car. Thanks, officer. Let's scram while we got the chance. Okay, make it casual. Hey! Where do you think you're going? Well, uh, we're taking our wounded friend to a hospital. We'll report at headquarters later. Well, you go to headquarters first. That man's all right. He's walking, isn't he? Now get in your car and we'll follow you. Well, certainly, officer. Anything you say. And don't go too fast. All right, keep him in sight. There's something funny down there. The police are following those birds, but why didn't they arrest them? They loaded the captain into the police car, and he looks badly hurt. Oh, forget it, Icky. I'll bet it's part of the captain's plan. Why don't you step on it and make a getaway? If midnight comes to, we're in a jam. Shut up. Get headquarters. The chief will get us out of it. Number seven, calling S-1. So you're coming too, are you, mystery man? Now I guess you can tell us what this thing is all about. I could, but I don't intend to talk until we reach headquarters. But if you value your job, don't lose sight of that car in front. I know my job. Come in, S-1. S-1 answering number seven. Come in, number seven. We're in a jam, Chief. We brought Captain Midnight out of the air all right, but before we could finish him off, a car of cops butted in. They're herding us ahead of him to headquarters for an explanation. What'll we do? Come in, S-1. You got into this mess, I should let you get out of it. But I won't, you might weaken and say too much. Give me your location. I'll get you out of it. We're on a road close to Field 13, headed toward Highway 107. We loaf along as much as we can. Come in, S-1. All right, I'll attend to it. Spotter, you and Slim get out there. Get them out of that fix they're in. Use plan 14 and report back to me here. It's as good as done, boss. Bang, you come with me. I need your help. Jury, take over. What are you stopping for? I don't know which way to go. Straight ahead, of course. We're going to headquarters. Straight ahead it is. The boss didn't lose any time sending help. That spotter and slimmer swell guys. We're a cinch now. Well, don't crow too soon. We're not out of a chip. Don't even know what they planned. Well, the hood was up, wasn't it? That means plan 14. Now keep your eyes open. Be ready to act. If it's any news, officer, we're being followed. Well, we don't own the highway. How do you know we're being followed? I recognize the occupants and they're tough birds. You've got a car crooks behind you and one ahead of you. They have some plan. All right, all right. We'll take care of that. They're on to us. You better get busy before we get closer to town. But don't try to hit them. Now maybe you'll believe me. You better stop them. Throw some red on them, boys. Step 
on it, you fool. Now they know we're worth taking. Turn off at the first side road. They got away, all right. They're after me. I'll get out before one of you are killed. Now's your chance to stop them. I'll stop them or else. That does it. They're through. Now we can beat it back to headquarters. Yeah, with a good report for once. Boys, that was close. It was a trick to get Captain Midnight away from us. I gotta get that radio working. Boy, what a break. There's Captain Midnight and he's hurt. We'll pick him up. Yeah, we'll give the captain a lift. He doesn't have a gun, that's certain. Yeah, you haven't got a chance, Midnight. <laughs> doing now? They're picking him up and carrying him to their car. What now? Well, uh, we'll follow them wherever they go. If our gas holds out. Borgman, where are we taking this bird? We're taking him to number three because that's the nearest. Hey, that plane that was over the field is following us. And that crate don't fly itself. We'll radio the boss. He'll have one of the fighters bring it down. Number seven calling S1. You were wise to agree to work on your invention. You'll find it to your advantage. I'm only doing it because I have to. I just heard from the boys. Martell reports a suspicious plane. I ordered a fighter to take care of it. Good. Did Martell recapture the mass flyer? Yes, sir. They're taking number three, the factory. Very good. We'll go there at once. I must learn the identity of this mysterious flyer. Yes, sir. The car's waiting. Well done, Slick. Edwards, I shall expect the model of your rangefinder to be completed when I return. Then you better give me some help. I'll give you all the help you can use. Only keep working. Lock the door. Escapes, I'll hold you responsible. Don't worry, he won't get away. about this. Well, hey, those bullets are meant for us. You ain't fooling. That plane must belong to that gang. What do we do? Well, there's not much we can do. Well, do something. Try zigzag. Zigzagging? In a plane? Take it easy, son. That's one of my inventions. Put aboard for just that purpose. I wish you'd let me in on things. Keep flying. Those are over. We gotta keep fooling them.
Well, that settles the plane. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Now we can head to the hideout. Step on it, Borgman. That was great, Chuck. One of the best landings you ever made. <laughs> a dead stick, too. I'll take off. Now we can follow that car again. Yeah, we can't go anywhere. We're out of gas. Take him out and get that wound dressed. Ah, we just wait until the chief gets here. Yeah, what are you bringing him here for? Because everything is fixed here. I know the chief wants to finish him off himself. Now, you watch him while I phone and see if he's left. Tell you everything. We're working for... You got it. No thanks to you. Get down and finish him. Joyce's plans. And how does Ivan Shark fit into the picture? Perhaps that ambulance will be his undoing. Perhaps Ivan Shark's days are numbered. See what happens in Ambushed Ambulance, next week's thrill-laden chapter of Captain Midnight. against him, yet 
Captain Midnight fights on, arrested on false charges, and then rescued by the villainous Ivan Shark gang, Captain Midnight faces certain doom in the master criminal's hideout. Boss wants to finish him. Hey, boss, he's out. What are we doing now? Get away from him. I get it. Why, boss, that's murder. You'll never get away with it. Murder, nothing. It was an accident. He fell on the table. All I did was to throw that switch. What happened? Go up and find out. is at the Clayton Hospital. Dr. Jordan thinks there may be a skull fracture. As soon as he regains consciousness, we'll find out where he was being held prisoner. Well, what did you learn? Nothing of importance, sir. The operators report that the factory was absolutely deserted and most of the machinery was wrecked. That'll be all. Yes, sir. Well, there goes another one of our clues. All we can do now is wait for Edwards to speak. Yes? Speaking. Oh, one moment, please. Joyce Edwards phoning you from the hospital. Oh. Now we'll have some news. Hello, Joyce. Yes, Captain. He's recovered consciousness, but he doesn't know me. His memory is gone. Oh, I'm sorry, Joyce. Terribly sorry. Yes, you'd better stay there with him for a while. That's right. Goodbye. Well, we're stymied for the time being. Edwards has lost his memory. Dr. Jordan thinks it may take an operation to make him speak. Oh, don't worry, Miss Edwards. Your father's physically sound, and I'm quite certain we can clear up his mental disorder within a few weeks. Let me know if there's any rise in his temperature, Miss Gray. Yes, Doctor. It's be in the office. I won't be back today unless you send for me. Yes, Doctor. Oh, by the way, Miss Edwards, I wouldn't allow anyone to question your father. It'll only tend to upset him. I understand, Doctor. Yes, I've got that. Dr. James Jordan. Yes. All right, have the men stand by for immediate action. Has Edwards talked? No, not yet. He's still unconscious in the Clayton Memorial Hospital. I want that, Doctor. You mean where to grab him? No, no, nothing so crude as that. You'll go to number 17, the Greer House. Have Dr. Jordan summoned on an emergency call. And when he arrives, I'll show you what I have in mind. The setup is perfect. 
He ought to be here now, unless he suspected something. Uh, stop worrying. That must be him. Get out of sight, you two. Come in, Doctor. Thank you. Well, where's the patient? <clears throat> We've had a little trouble. You'll have to wait. What's the idea of locking the door? Just follow orders, Doc, and you won't get hurt. Sit down. Just what is the idea? Sit down. Now take it easy. Take it easy. What am I supposed to do? Just sit still if you know what's good for you. Yourselves open to a charge of kidnapping. You're keeping me here against my will. It's just what we're going to do. Watch it. What about his voice? I'm Dr. Jordan on the staff of the Clayton Memorial Hospital. That's marvelous. That would fool a doc himself. Good. Jerry, tell Red to get the car ready. All right. I know. Your father's condition has worried me. And I've decided that the patient's best chance for a speedy recovery is to be removed to a private sanitarium in the country. The chart, Miss Gray, please. I suppose you know best, Doctor, but I think perhaps I'd better notify father's friend, Captain Albright. Ah, uh, I've already done that. The captain has suggested that I show you the sanitarium. And if it meets with your approval, we can remove your father at once. Can you go with me now? Of course. I'll do everything I can to help. Thank you. Pulse 91. I don't like it. There, there, Dad. We'll soon have you all fixed up. Are you ready, Miss Edwards? All right, Doctor. A private ambulance will call for the patient within an hour. Very well, Doctor. Stay away from me, I tell you. There, there. It's all right. It's all right. Come in. Hello, Miss Gray. How's the patient? No change, Captain Albright. He rambles a lot, but it doesn't make sense. I see. I expected to find Miss Edwards here. Well, I thought you knew. Miss Edwards went to look at the sanitarium with Dr. Jordan. Sanitarium? What do you mean? Well, Dr. Jordan is sending Mr. Edwards to a private sanitarium. He said he'd informed you of his plans. He sent in an ambulance. Well, that's strange. I don't like it. I'd like to talk to Dr. Jordan myself. Hello, this is Captain Albright. See if you can locate Dr. Jordan for me, please. Thanks. I don't like this job. The hospital's too public. That's a cinch. Some of the boys will be there to cover us. Yes. Are you sure? All right, thanks. Dr. Jordan was called out on an emergency case two hours ago. As far as his office knows, he had no intention of coming to the hospital. Jumping snakes. I'll bet it's another plot to grab Mr. Edwards. But Dr. Jordan was here. Do you think they bribed him? Sure they did. Let's call the cops. Wait a minute. I've got a better plan. If what I surmise is true, it's necessary that we do not let them know we suspect them. Here's what we'll do. Watch yourself, boys. Here they come. Uh, 
Have anything, Jack? Sure. We're here just in case. Yeah, I know. Coming in? Is this Dr. Jordan's patient? Yes, he's been given an opiate to quiet him for the transfer. Good idea. Take it away. Careful now. Oh, we'll take care of him. will get right into their hideout. Be careful now. Remember, Mr. Edwards is a very sick man. We'll watch him, and he'll get the best of care as soon as we get him to the captain's place in Nevada. All clear. Bring him along, Nicky. Scram. Here they come. Back to double check to see that they don't suspect anything. You drive, Nicky. I'll get him back to Mr. Edwards. Now be careful. Edwards is in that automobile. It's someone else they put in the ambulance. Captain Midnight, I bet you. Jump to a telephone, Slim, and report this to the chief. Tell them we're trailing them. All right, spot her after. The ambulance with your father should be here shortly. Will you pardon me, please? Certainly. What? Hold the phone. Slim's out of phone. Something's gone wrong. Hello? Yes, speaking. What? They've taken Captain Midnight. Are you sure? All right, I'll take care of it. The fools, the idiots. S1 calling number seven. S1 calling number seven. Come in, number seven. That's my call. Take it, Cardo. Number five, answering for number seven. Come in, S1. If it's any news to you, you have Captain Midnight inside the ambulance. You've allowed him to trick you. Yes, Chief, yes. Act at once. Don't let him escape. All right, S1. We'll take care of it. All right, what was it? That's Midnight we got back there. Midnight? And where's Edwards? Logman and the other men are trailing him. We got our work cut out for us. Slow down, I tell you. Slow down. You had a gun, too. Yeah, but I didn't have a chance to use it. Well, use this. Hey, what did you do that for? Hey, you don't have to fight my battle. I was right, Icky. That car is following us. Okay. This jalopy will outrun anything those guys have got. They spotted us. Don't let them get away. I wonder if this has got any speed.
Something suspicious about him. Can he bear any relation to Shark's perfidious plottings? At any rate, Fury Shark is every bit as dangerous as her father. Cut of the same cloth, she'll stop at nothing. Don't miss Weird Waters, next week's dynamic chapter of Captain Midnight. <laughs> takes his place. Then, escaping the clutches of Ivan Shark's men, Midnight courageously returns for their capture. But fate intervenes, and the famous pilot faces extinction. And we better help him? He said no. Jimmy does. Well, start the motor and then we'll follow. I can't. The keys are gone. Why well, we take their car? Come on, come on, move over. Ah, relax. The dirty crook stole their key. Now what do you want? Call your headquarters and tell them you've got Edwards and are bringing him in. I wouldn't dare. The chief would have me rubbed out. He won't get a chance to if you'll do as I say. Okay. Number eight calling S1. The radio. I'll take the liberty of answering it. Number eight calling S1. Come in, S1. S1 to number eight. Come in, number eight. Go ahead. Emergency, S1. Emergency. Have Edwards a prisoner. Also important other information. Where shall I take him? Come in. Bring him to the country hideout at once. That is all. What does he mean, country hideout? He told me where to take you. Then get going and don't try any tricks. Remember, whatever happens, you'll go first. 
Well, my dear, we seem to have worried needlessly. One of the men has just informed me that they're bringing your father here immediately. You can't fool me, Dr. Jordan. I heard everything. You're in league with those men. I'm leaving here at once. If you'll stay here and greet your father if you want him to live. Get in that room. Go on, you little fool. Get in there. <laughs> Yes. I want you to wait on the Edwards girl. Perhaps you can make her tell more than she has. I'm sure I can. Red, you listen to me. Yes, sir. Hello, sister. You and I are going to have a little powwow. I'm not discussing anything with you. You're wasting your time. We'll see about that. And then set the trap in the basement. Visitors coming, huh? Yes. Borgman warned me over the radio. He used the code word. I hope it's Captain Midnight. I'll fix it in a jiffy. Hurry. I've got to get out of these things. You'd better tell me what I want to know. I'd hate to spoil that pretty face of yours. How many times must I tell you I know nothing about my father's invention? Well, I don't believe you. I'll make you talk. <laughs> now will you talk? No. I hope you know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm driving you to headquarters. You'd better. Look, we're expecting Borgman. Let him come through. Then lock the gates and don't let anyone in or out without permission. I got you. Oh, stop. I can't stand anymore. Then you'll talk? Yes. Yes. I'll tell it. I... Well, tell me. Set, sir. Good. Get below in case you need it. Yes, sir. She must be in the ground. She went that way. We'll get her. Quick, man, quick. She got off the wall. Get a car, bring her back. All right, slow down and stop. I suspected something like this. They're planning more sabotage. I heard them talking about planes, dropping bombs, destroying plants. Anything definite? No. Well, there's no chance to do anything now but run. You, get over and back, Joyce. Hop in and drive. Stopping to pick him up. 
they're still after us. The rope's blocked off. Don't stop, keep going. Josh, get on the running board and be ready to jump fast. Set a state by the car, they wouldn't have made a getaway. We gotta get to headquarters. Come on, start walking. This should be our big chance to round up the gang. Are you sure this man's the leader? He must be. He gave all the orders and handled everything. We'd better try the wall. Someone coming over the wall. See if you can see who it is. Well? It's Captain Midnight and the girl. He's coming into my trap at last. The girl, too. He must have been waiting for her. Where are the men? I don't know, but no matter. We'll be ready for him. Red, get to the basement. Yes, sir. Gory? Now, do your part, and it's sure to work. I hope so. Hurry.
nation's chief officials are concerned, yet Ivan Shark's depredations continue. He even interferes with official business. But can his evil work go on forever? Shall nothing prevent his criminal actions? Perhaps the police. But wait, you can learn all in menacing fates. Next week's pulse-raising chapter of Captain Midnight. are slim, yet Captain Midnight fights through to the end. Trapped by Ivan Shark at his hideout, Midnight escapes, only to be snared again by the master criminal's treachery.
tried to get midnight, killed Red instead. Where's the girl? I haven't seen her. Well, we must find her. Please, operator, I don't know the address. Send the police. I... We won't wait to find out. Get the car ready while I destroy all papers here. We'll take the girl with us. Calling car 27. Calling car 27. Go to Old Greer Estate on Wilton Road. Woman calling for help. Hurry. I'll have you out of here in no time, but I mustn't overlook the chance to investigate this place. Please hurry. Yes? Oh, sir, it's important. Hello? Hello, Major Steele. This is Captain Midnight. I just discovered a new attempt on defense plants in our district. Give me the details. That's right. I'm at one of their hideouts now and... Hello. Hello, Major Steele. Operator. Hello, all right. Lieutenant, trace that call. The wire went dead. It's very important. Yes, sir. Line is dead. The wire's been cut. The car is ready. We leave at once. I'm sure Captain Midnight has summoned help. Well, what about the girl? We'll have to let her go for now. <gasps> the police. Back inside. We'll have to bluff. Waited too long. They destroyed everything and escaped. We've got to get to a phone and warn Major Steele of that bombing attack. Come on, George. We must hurry.
hasn't got a gun. Why, of course not. He killed that man himself. I saw it. He lies. He lies. Oh, you're all lying. I'm taking you both in. Watch him. Two women making a getaway in the car. Who are they? Why, they are... Don't you see, officer? They're kidnapping my witness. So now it's kidnapping, huh? Well, you're going with me. Good. Stop letting him get away. <laughs> Get to the car. We'll get him.
I, I hope so. Steady. Steady. From this den spreads all evil. Can the law forestall their dire plot to wreck the nation's safety? Are these men assured of success? You'll learn the answers in Shells of Evil, next week's gripping chapter of Captain Midnight. faces the nation's deadliest criminals. In an attempt to rescue the kidnapped Joyce, Midnight is an easy target for Ivan Shark's aviators who bomb him from the air. That's it. That plane's bombing the road. Get off of it. I'll place the warning ahead. Go ahead, struggle your head off, sister. Get loose if you can. Nothing can save Captain Midnight. I'll get him this time. I hope so. Steady. Steady. God, you got him that time. Yeah, but you better circle around once to make sure. You're Captain Midnight. Watch out or you'll be next. young lady. I thought you were killed. So does her father, I hope. Joyce, get at the wheel. We're taking this girl in. I refuse to go. Well, what do you see? What a fine kettle of fish this is. Captain Midnight's not only escaped, but now he's captured the chief's daughter. Get in the car. Now he's putting on a car. What do we do? Well, I'll keep the car in sight. You ready the boss. He'll tell us what to do. And how I hate to do it. Number eight, calling S-1 at 17. Number eight, calling S-1 at 17. S-1 answering. Come in, number eight. Bad news, Chief. Captain Midnight escaped the bombing raid, recovered the girl, and is taking Fury with him. Shall we bomb the car? Certainly not, you idiot. Follow car to destination and report to me here. I'll wait. Right, sir. We're on our way. Taking me. Doesn't matter to you. I'm going to use you as bait to trap that mastermind you're all working for and make him call off the bombing raids. Why you haven't a chance? Human life means nothing compared with his great objective. He'll not call off the raids because of me. Depend on that, Captain Midnight. The plane is still overhead. Do you suppose they'll bomb us again? 
I hope they do. They won't. They want to see where we take our prisoner. We won't keep them in suspense. Go to police headquarters. Right. S1 answering. Come in. Prisoner taken to police headquarters. Car waiting outside. What will we do? Return to home field. Await my arrival. I'm leaving now. S1 signing off. Well, that's that. Head for home before some army plane gets on our tail and blows us out of the sky. Home it is. Well, this is encouraging. Thanks to you, Captain Albright. Yes, but we're only postponing trouble to another time. Unless we can locate and trap this gang and his leader. With his daughter in our hands, we'll never have a better chance. We should learn a lot. Well, perhaps you're right, but she'll be tough. Oh, well, pardon me, Major. May I use your phone? I assume it couldn't be tapped. Certainly not. Are you sure the other end isn't? Certain. It's my private line, buried underground. Hey, Doc. How long do you think it'll be before the old man gets his brains unscrambled? It's very indefinite. Perhaps tomorrow, perhaps next month, perhaps not at all. Hey, he's an encouraging cuss, ain't he? Hey, there's the phone. Ain't you gonna get it? Oh, yeah, I'll get it, Dickie. Hey, Doc, you get it? Newfangled telephone. When the phone rings, it don't. A light light. It's you, Captain. Icky and me been on pins and needles. What's cooking? No time to explain now. How's the patient? Oh, he's chipper as a chipmunk, eating like two horses. But he don't remember a thing. Well, keep the doctor there. Edward's memory may return at any moment. We need a witness. Now, one of you stay on guard there day and night. In case of trouble, phone Major Steele's office. I got you, Captain. We'll be Johnny on the spot. Is my father all right? Progressing nicely. Now, no need to worry. See here, Albright. I understood Edwards was taken to your Nevada hideaway. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, Major, I forgot to tell you. You see, that was said for the benefit of the shark and his gang. He's been at his home under a specialist's care all the time. <laughs> when will I be able to go to him? Well, you must be patient too, Joyce. You see, apparently your home is deserted. Now we must do nothing to let them suspect he's there. You'll have to wait. My only weakness is the helpless fools who serve me. Hereafter, I'll take matters into my own hands and lead you all myself. Hello? Yes, I know my daughter wasn't left at the police station, Borgman. It was another trick of midnight's. Well, go on. Well, use any method you wish. I'll get at it to take the consequences. Borgman is finally using his brains. He has Gardo acting as a window washer on the building where Steele's office is located. You don't think we'd learn anything by questioning Shark's daughter again? No, I'm sure we wouldn't. I tried everything. Her only value was as a lead to this Ivan Shark, her father. What I don't understand is why they've made no effort to rescue Shark's daughter. You gave it to me, Major. They're liable to attempt it any moment. Only we're gonna beat him to the punch. I'll go to the hospital and get that girl away from the prison ward where she is now and fly her to my hideaway in Nevada. I'll do it today. Why, that's idiotic. You're laying yourself wide open. I'm sorry, Major. It has to be that way. But you'll take my men as guards? No, that'll attract too much attention. I'll risk it alone, and I'll leave the field at three sharp. Now remember, Major, not a word to anyone. Why, certainly not. I'll... He's I... gone. Now, perhaps you'll tell me what all this acting's about. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, Major, but that window washer happens to belong to the gang. He was sent here to listen, and I gave him an earful. If I'm right, we'll get that gang, and perhaps it's cheap right where we want them. Albright's place in Nevada. Plane ready here. Notify me when his plane takes off. We'll follow. Well, the first part of the plan is working, but we'll have to wait till they take off. Get my hat, Bang. Should be it. Albright's plane about to take off. Goods on board. Orders. 
Return here to headquarters and stick by radio. We're taking off at once. Right, sir. Now we'll rescue Fury, destroy Midnight, and recapture Edwards all in one fell swoop. Get at it. Midnight is none other than Albright, dressed up for our benefit. Now we're over the spot. Bail out, all of you. His men have all bailed out. Well, what about the leader? He's circling back. He's too smart. Those men are bound to come here, so we're going to have to change our plans.
shark aloft, his foul deeds done, can he now work toward his wicked end uninterrupted? And what about the other men in Shark's gang? Can they be unnerved now when success seems certain? See what happens in the drop to doom. Next week's action cram chapter of Captain Midnight. shark in a gigantic air battle. After luring the master criminal and his men to his Nevada ranch, Midnight engages him in the sky, but ill luck pursues him and Shark appears victorious. Nobody could come out of that washout and live. Shut up, Killjoy. He's come out of worse than this. You say a word, I tell you. Come on, Captain. Snap out of it. Oh! Well, snap into it. I found the car. I thought you was a goner. Yeah, so did I. Did you manage to hold any of those men? I'll say we did. All of them. They're tied up like chickens, ready for you to cut their heads off. Oh, yeah? Look. Tied them up. What with? Spider webs? Well, don't blame me. You help me. Never mind, boys. Help me to the shop. We'll radio Major Steele. He may be able to have them rounded up. Hey, we're taking chances staying on the highway. You better take a side road. Nothing doing. The chief will see us. He'll contact us. Don't worry. There. What'd I tell you? Chief, all right, he spotted us. He signaled he's going to land on that field. You better get over there, Snake. Oh, that was great work, Chief. You sure polished off Captain Midnight. Yes, he got up and walked out of the wreck while you incompetent louts were driving away. But he crashed. We heard it. He must have been killed. Shut up. He's alive, I tell you. What about my daughter? Well, I was coming to that. They tricked us. She never was with him. That little guy must have dressed up in her clothes. Shut up, all of you. Let me do the talking. Howdy, gents. What's Hello. Fine, how are you? My name's Jason. 
I'm constable of this county. I just got a flash about a gang of men on the loose. Jamming an airplane, too, with machine guns popping. Wow. Really? Looks like you've got some explaining to do, mister. <laughs> Boys, it looks as though we were suspected. <laughs> I'm sure we're in the clear, Constable. There's my ship at your service. Step in and look her over. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's just what I aim to do. Well, Constable, did you find anything? Give me a chance. I haven't taken a good look yet. Take him. Hey. What is this? We recognize no law but our own. Number seven, take him inside. I have a plan to use him to our advantage. You ought to stay and watch. All right, get moving. All right, get him out of his clothes. Hurry. You don't mean you're going you to... You guessed it. I'm going to assume a new personality. But that's impossible. Look at the pouch he's got. Wait till you see the pouch I have. My bat will take care of that. Now do as you're told. All right, mister. Start feeling. See here, man. You're flirting with dynamite. I'm the law. All right. All right, Grandpa. Just get out of him. Here, put these on him. I wonder what he has in mind. Don't worry. We'll find out soon enough. Hey, you! Turn around! Turn around! Uh-huh. Okay. Well, Martell, what's the verdict? Marvelous, boss. Why, you ain't you, you're him. What about the voice? Listen to this. My name's Jason. I'm constable of this county. What you're doing isn't legal. You'll be punished. Shut up. Thanks a million, Major. I'll wait till the plane arrives and report to you in person. Be sure and guard Edwards and his daughter. Albright signing off. Major Steele reports all highways and every known landing field are covered. It may bring results. Yeah, that's just dandy, but uh, what are we going to do to help? There's a plane on its way here to pick us up. We'll make our plans on the way back. Don't let him get away. Lift him high, you cutthroats. I'll blast the first one that hesitates. Lift him higher. Don't shoot, Constable. We'll give up. <laughs> Put them down, you fools. I was just checking on this makeup. Why, boss, it's you. You fooled us again. Certainly. If it fools my own men, it should be good enough. Boy, I say it will. Get your orders from Martell. Stop him! Hey, Stop him! You'll pay for this. Get him to the car. We've got a long way ahead of us. What's that? See who it is. I wouldn't know, but he's got a great big star on his vest. The local talent, I'll bet. Well, open up for the law, Chuck. I'll get to the point pronto. My name's Jason. I'm constable of these parts. I'm here on official business. What's your name? Albright. Captain Albright. You couldn't be Captain Midnight, too, now could you? Well, I... Don't deny it. I've got your figure. You, are you kidding? Say, you better leave that gun alone, Mr. Constable. You'll force us to hurt you. Quiet, boys, quiet. He's only doing his duty. I'm not denying that I am sometimes known as Captain Midnight. What do you want of me? I don't want nothing, but Los Angeles does. You're wanted for murder. Will you come peaceful, or do I get tough? Of all the crazy gold loot. Say the word, Captain, we'll toss him out. Good. Don't say nothing or I'll blast you down. Don't worry, Constable, I can handle them. I'll go with you. I'm anxious to go. Now you're showing good sense. Get to the car. Oh, uh, don't worry, boys. I know what I'm doing. Contact Major Steele and tell him what happened. I'll be at the... The county seat. Get going. Well, 
if everything went right, he ought to be along any minute now. Yeah, if it went right. But suppose it didn't. We're waiting here like a bunch of pigeons, ready to be picked off. Let's grab the plane and beat it. Ah, oh, forget it, Gloomy. The chief won't miss. You're a uh, brave man, Constable, taking me in all alone. I'm not alone. The law's on my side. And six little helpers in this. But uh, you wouldn't use it. What makes you think I wouldn't? Because you'd be killing the only man who knows where your daughter is hidden. <laughs> I didn't think you'd shoot. Your makeup is excellent, but you made one mistake. That ring on your finger. You had it on when your helper was killed and tried to pin it on me. Then you were a convincing old man. Admitting all that, so what? Your uh, aptness at disguises intrigues me. I'm anxious to learn your real identity. It doesn't matter. You're my prisoner and you'll remain that way. At least I now know your real voice. Wouldn't it be better to stop, get off the road? Perhaps we can reach a compromise. Now you're beginning to be sensible. I'll deal. On your toes, boys. Here comes the boss. What do you turn off the road for? How do I know? Wait and see. Now, tell me where my daughter is and I'll call a truce. Long enough for you to make a getaway. That's fair enough. But first, I must know who I'm dealing with. You're in no position to demand anything. Do as I say or I'll finish her here. Grab him, man! We better get over there. I'm no good. I'm wounded. Well, stay here, then. Hold it! That's far enough. One false move and I'll let you have it. I'm taking this man in with me. If you want to come in on the side of the law, now's your last chance. Well, what you seem a little uncertain. All right, I'll take this man. Get up! I can't. I'm hurt. What are you going to do with me? I'll wait and see. Oh! Get him to the plane. We've got to find out where Fury is. Martell, take the other car with Slick. Return to the workshop. Tear it apart if necessary, but find that model of Edwards' rangefinder. Hey, we're going back to Albright's place to get Edwards' model. It's Chief's orders. Have operatives stand by and report to me if anything develops. Yes, sir. Surely there's something we can do besides that. Captain Albright may even now be dead at the hands of that gang. We have no proof that they have him. All we know is that Constable Jason's office had no warrant for him, and that both disappeared into thin air. Yes? Dr. Jordan, phoning from the Edwards home, sir, says it's important. Uh, put him on. Oh, that's my father's doctor. This is Major Steele speaking. Stop it! Why don't you leave me alone? Hello, Major. I know I'm disobeying orders, but we're in a ticklish situation. Edwards has taken a turn for the worse. That's bad news, Doctor, and we'll do anything you suggest to help. He's been raving again, calling for his daughter. Goodbye. What is it? What happened? The, the doctor says your father is worse. Oh. He's calling for you. And our only chance is for you to go to him. Of course, I'll go at once. Wait, it's risky. And we'll have to send some men with you. Well, then hurry. S1 calling number eight at headquarters. Hurry. Boss, he's skin you alive. Oh, shut up. Number eight answering. Come in, S1. At last you answer. Have you located my daughter yet? No luck yet. Our men are watching every likely place. Anything else? Come in. We discovered that Edwards is at his home. Lost his memory. Number 12 is on a job. Come in. A needless procedure. If Edwards has lost his memory, he's of no value to us. Recall number 12. Wait, Chief. Number 12 reports that Edwards' daughter is on her way over there. What now? Come in. Good. Take help. Go over there and get that girl. Answer. 
But that means battling government men. Not so hot. Government men or not, do as I say. Go over there and get that Edwards girl. S1 signing off. You better hurry, do a good job, or boss, he go. Oh, quiet, Fang. I know what he'll do, but I don't have to like it. <laughs> See here, Shark. Counterman that order about the Edwards girl, and I'll tell you where to find your daughter. Too late. With the girl in my hands, I can make my own terms. I may dispense with you entirely. I haven't decided yet. But listen to reason. I don't want to talk about it! <laughs> I'm taking the ship down. One step forward and we all crash together. Obstructed by the local constable. Can Chuck and Icky get away in time? And what about the inventor, Edwards? Is he still suspicious of the friends who seek to aid him? You can't afford to miss the hidden bomb. Next week's thrill-packed chapter of Captain Midnight. <laughs> to capture Ivan Shark, but a local constable interferes, and Midnight falls hopelessly into the hands of Ivan Shark's terrorists. Hey, 
Can't tell. What about this? Well, that's screwy enough to be it. Let's cut it loose. Suck them away from me, but I'll get them. There's two of them. I'm taking them in on you, too, as witnesses. Not until we radio Major Steele of our catch. All right. Then give me a hand and help me get them up. A-12 calling B-76. A-12 calling B-76. Major Steele speaking. We captured a couple of bozos of that gang, and we don't know what to do with them. Well, bring them here at once to my office. Hurry. I'm signing off. You heard what they said? Have the operatives stand by. Yes, sir. Well, what about me? I arrested them. You go along with us. It'll be a feather in your cap to take them to intelligence headquarters. Come on, you luck. All right. Don't get stuck. Look at me. Don't you remember me? Joyce, your daughter. Lies. All lies. Get out. I'll tell you nothing. Leave me alone. It's no use, doctor. He doesn't recognize me. My being here has made him worse, if anything. Come, come, Miss Edwards. You must be patient. Are you the government man? Yeah. I'm from police headquarters. The chief sent me over to see if old man Edwards could identify this bird. Not a chance. He's balmy. Why, he don't even know his own daughter. Still daffy, eh? Well, the girl will do. We'll let her give him the once over. Come on, you. Keep your eyes peeled while I help this fellow. Tell him I can't see him at this time. I won't see anyone. Just a moment. Really, I would advise seeing this man. If he is one of them, we'll bring him before your father. Perhaps his very appearance will be the spark necessary to fire his memory. Very well. Tell him I'll be right down. The girl says she'd be right. Well, where's your partner? <laughs> Get up, Peg, and let the lady take a look at you. Now, take a good look, lady. Is this one of the men that robbed the house? No. I'm sure I've never seen this man before in my life. We're sorry we bothered you, lady. Oh, it's quite all right. Get her out of here, quick. What about him? We'll be in a clear before he breaks out. Take it easy. Any luck? No, he ain't the guy. I told you all the time. Shut up! You talk too much. We got plenty of counts on you. Much obliged. Sister. Hey, take it easy, Spotter. We don't want to get picked up. I don't accept no excuses. You failed on the job. We're awfully sorry. Well, you stay there until I contact you. More trouble, sir? Yes. That shark gang went right in under their noses and abducted Joyce Edwards. And I haven't an idea where they've taken her. I wonder if you'll be that brave tomorrow. You know, it's plenty tough on a gal when her beauty's marred. Oh! <laughs> I said get out! All right, all right. No luck, huh? She 
She's not weakening. No, but that crack I made about Marno Beauty will make her think. Say, why not do just that? Uh-huh. If Fury were here, we might try it. I'll only be a few minutes. Wait for me. Take your time. What you paying me, I'll camp here with. <laughs> Fill her up while I use your phone. Right. Up to the brim, buddy, and some of that two-bed oil. Best. What is it now? Captain Albright on the phone, sir. Long distance. Albright, put him on. Hello, Albright. Where have you been? That's a long story. Have you time to listen? Not now. We're in trouble here. Joyce Edwards has been abducted. Any trace? No trace. Our only chance is to find their hideout, then raid the place. When will you be in? Before dark. I'm heading for the nearest airport and we'll charter a plane. Now, please don't do anything till I arrive. They might do something desperate. Goodbye. I hope she eats this. She hasn't eaten a bite all day. She's only hurting herself if you don't. Thanks, Charlie. Come on now, dearie. Eat your supper. Don't be stubborn. Oh, the whole thing is fantastic. Well, anything's better than just sitting here waiting for something to happen. Why not try it? Well, we have no assurance that your plan would work. Besides, we're pressed for time. Why not throw scruples away and make Shark's daughter talk? Oh, a waste of time. The best you'd get would be lies and more lies. Yes. What? Well, wasn't anyone able to follow? I'll let no one talk and return here. Well, it has to be your plan. Shark's daughter has escaped. All right, Major. Everything is arranged. Now we are racing against time. Always pushing me around. There, there. Now, Mr. Edwards, if you'll just sit here, you'll be perfectly safe. Certainly I'll be safe. Why shouldn't I be? Go on, leave me alone. I want to rest. Oh, give me five minutes at a time to rest. Always putting me out. Remember, gentlemen, this is not my idea. The results may be very serious. I'll take full responsibility. Now get out of sight. It belongs to me. That's my invention. You'll never get it. Never. It's mine. All right, boys, we're going into our act, but be careful. A man's life is at stake. You'll never get it. It belongs to me. Listen, man, the Edwards model is here someplace, and it's our job to find it. Once we get it, the government will be helpless to stop it. It's as good as in our hands now, boss. All right, get going. Edwards range finder is in the hands of his country's enemies. And best of all, his country will never even get a chance to use it. No, no, never. You'll never get those plans. Ooh. All right, hold him then. <laughs> quickly, get him into the chair. Dr. Jordan, Dr. Jordan, quickly. You hit him pretty hard, Captain. I had to, Doctor. This next minute means everything. It'll prove whether my theory was correct. He's coming too. Remember, not a word from anyone. Why, Albright. Major Steele, what are you doing here? 
What happened? Who are these men? Nothing matters now except that you recognize us. Well, of course I do. Why shouldn't I? What happened? We'll explain later. But first of all, do you remember where that gang held your prisoner? Of course I do. In a garage. I'll never forget it. Why? We'll get to the car quickly. I'll tell you on the way. Is it all right, Doctor? Yes, yes, of course it is. Take him right in line. Come on, Mr. Evans. Well, what's this all about? Come right away now. I can't understand. Captain Midnight just drove up across the street. Now it's a cinch he's headed here. Let's scram. Now don't run, you fools. He's walking right into the trap I set for him. Hurry, bring Gary and the Edwards girl here. The rest of you listen to me. You're crazy to attempt it alone. I've got to take the chance. To crash the place might mean Joyce is dead. Give me 15 minutes. All right, have it your own way. All right, stay where you are. So you were going to warn the chief, huh? No, I wasn't really. I wasn't. Get that door open. I can't. I can't. Get it open. won't talk. We'll get out of here. You let her have it. I'll be glad to. <laughs> Shark been cornered at last? Or will he and his men be able to get away? And Fury, will she be able to wreak her vengeance on Joyce? Or will Major Steele and his men arrive in time to save her? Don't fail to see Sky Terror, next week's thrill-packed chapter of Captain Midnight.
stubbornly resisting the deadly efforts of Ivan Shark to have him destroyed, Captain Midnight brings the master criminal closer and closer to the gallows. But Shark's organization is powerful, and at last, Midnight's cause seems hopelessly lost. off the main power supply. I did. You said to destroy everything. You certainly did, and I hadn't finished midnight yet. Get that door open. Fate is kind to you, Captain Midnight. It forces me to finish you quickly instead of... Don't be a threat and get it over with. Not yet. I want to enjoy myself to the limit. We can't wait any longer. We're going in there. Midnight might be in trouble. Will you be all right, Edwards? Yes, I'm all right. Go ahead. Your efforts to interfere with me have been in vain. You'll die here alone, deserted, and forgotten. I don't boasting, Ivan Shark. Killing me counts for nothing. Go ahead, shoot! <laughs> Scram fast. Government men are at the garage door. Edwards must have led him here. No, no, no. Don't get in a panic. It'll take time to force that door. Get to the emergency exit. I'll send Fury to you. But what about you? It's my chance to get Edwards as well as his daughter. Now do as I say. <laughs> you before anyone can get in. Not a chance to force this, Major. It's solid steel. Get that cutting torch. We'll burn through it. Oh, I've been waiting for you. Father, what's this all about? What's happened? Plenty. Join the men at the secret exit and take command. Will you come, too? If you're caught, that's our finish. Oh, I won't be there. Think I'm midnight. If I'm caught, I'll shoot my way out. Now do as I say. Oh, all right. We can't afford to wait all night. <laughs> That'll fool him. I even fool myself. Captain Midnight! I knew you'd find me. Where's my father? Safe. We must hurry. I'll explain later. There, ah, that does it. Major! Well, good work, Captain. What about the gang? They're barricaded in there. Hold them off while I get Joyce to safety. I'll take her to her father. He's got a gun. Then Dad's all right again? Why didn't the captain tell you? Well, I, I, I didn't have time. You'd better get in there, Major. We're all ready, Jerry. All right, let's go. Dad! Joyce, darling. Hey. Get in the car, Mr. Edwards. We're on dangerous ground. What about Major Steele and the men? They're rounding up the crooks. Get in! I know what I'm doing. Hold it. I'm arresting you.
arresting you, Captain Midnight, for murder. You got away before, but not this time. Why, you, you're making a mistake, officer. I'm on government business. Certainly. Ask Major Steele. He's in that garage. Major Steele or no one else can square a murder rap coming. You're making a terrible mistake. All officer. right, all right. If they get him to headquarters, they'll see through that disguise and he's a cooked goose. They'll never get him to headquarters. Get in the car, quick. Try and talk this fool out of this. Please wait for Major Steele. Not a chance. Come on. The police have him. I phone headquarters to hold him until we get there. I'm betting it's a frame-up. You get George and the father to safety. I'm following that car. Follow that police car. You're interfering with government business. Better reconsider. I'll make it worth your while. Bribery, huh? Nothing doing. You got away from me once, so I'm not taking any chances with you. Just handcuff you to this rope, Braille. Come on away here. Don't get too close, but keep that tail light in sight. Hey, Jim. Looks like an accident ahead there. Slow down. What happened here? It wasn't my fault, honest. She stepped right in front of my car. She hurt very bad? Gee, I, I don't know. I'm afraid she is. Hey, Jim, bring the first aid kit. First aid drivers, there ought to be something done with you guys. Look out! Carol Curry, I knew you'd think of something. Hurry, hurry, they can't fight forever. I'm hurrying, you fool. Pull over beside the road. All right, we've accomplished our purpose. Call those men in. Well, what are you waiting for? Yeah, but you ain't getting away. All right, get me to your chief in a hurry. You bet we will. Your attempted rescue was a bus. Yes, a bigger one than you think. All right, come on. Give... Oh, I'm glad to see you boys. And your prisoners, too. Major, Captain Albright's army reporting with two captives of uncertain and dubious character. And take it from me, mates, they are tough hombres. <laughs> Did you get anything from them? Nothing but abuse, but we got plenty to hold them on. I'll say. Uh, where's Captain Albright? We've been worried. No need. He's at the police station questioning Shock. You mean they got him? Yes. That's a lot of hoey. They'll never get him. He's too smart, too powerful. Shut up! Uh, thanks, Mage. I was going to take care of it myself. Yes, sir? Uh, get me the chief of police. You think it's true? If it wasn't for the publicity, I'd suspend you both without pay. Don't be too hard on them, Chief. It was an honest mistake. Mistake my eye. They had the biggest criminal unhung in their hands and let him get away. Hello? Oh, hello, Chief. Did the men arrive there with the shark? They arrived, all right, but without the shark. They brought Albright instead. Oh, they did, huh? And he talked plenty, huh? Did you hear me? They brought Albright instead. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Put all right on. He wants to talk to you. Hello, Major. The gang pulled a fast one and our man got away. Well, my congratulations. Your men are here, brought in a couple of the Sharks men. You better hurry over. Good. Tell them nothing. I'm on my way. Thanks, Chief. Thanks for everything. Don't mention it. Well, the gang's busted higher than a kite. Shark is scared to death, falling all over himself to tell everything. When Captain Midnight showed up, I sure thought the jig was up. That guy's got more lives than a cat. That's right. Didn't we see the boss plugging? Ah, oh, he couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. He ought to let me do all his shooting. Perhaps I will. Next time, Borgman. Gee, boss, you didn't know I was listening. Well, I was. Let that be a lesson to you. Keep your mouth shut. I'm sorry. Quiet.
Relax, relax. It's Morton with news. Well, what did you learn? Speak up. The military intelligence have got Martell and Slick. I never oh, thought they'd get Martell and Slick. Quiet! Have they talked? Don't know. No one could get near those officers. Number 27 reported Captain Midnight was released, and they're all in a big powwow. Suppose they talk. Quiet! They won't talk. They know the penalty for squealing. But I'll not let them remain in custody. Morton, join our other operators. Cover the building. Report everything to me here. Yes, sir. Well, what are we going to do? Yeah, well, wait until I tell you, of course. Now, come here, all of you. What I'm telling you, boys, is the truth. You haven't got a chance. Now, why not swing over on the side of the law for a change? You're throwing a swell line off, right? But we ain't falling for it. Because if you had Ivan Sharp and he sang, you wouldn't be wasting time on Slick on me. It's all a lot of hooey. Now throw the book at us if you can. I dare you. Lock them up. Come on. Get out of here. They're well trained. They know if they talk, their lives won't be worth two cents. You're right. The gang is well organized. But they got Ivan Shark away and they're bound to try and rescue these men. Bosh, that's impossible. Ah, not if we made it look easy. So, and how do we do it? Tomorrow morning, we'll broadcast over all news hookups that the prisoners are being transferred for safety, as they show willingness to talk. We'll give the time and destination. To the big house, straight out Highway 67. Must be sure fire at all times. Well, I should hope so. Yes? Yes, I've got that. Highway 67. Yes. All right. S1 calling number eight. S1 calling number eight. Come in, eight. Number eight answering. Go ahead, S1. Goods on way. Big house. Highway 67. Got it? Repeat back. Highway 67. Everything's Jake. We'll report in and finish. Over. Load up, Gardo. Right. Well, things are working out as you figured. I wonder. Fang, stay by the radio. Yes, Master. Hey, how about letting us in on where we're going? You know where you're going, to the big house, out Highway 67. It's working as you planned, but what are those birds going to do? That's my worry. We should soon find out. They're coming. Now be ready to scram out if Spotter fails to stop them. Hey, you better slow down. It looks like the road's blocked. the trouble. You'll have to detour the bridges out ahead. Well, you'll have to let us through. We've got a couple of prisoners we're taking to the big house. That's my orders. All right, let's go. Well, Alan, what are we going to do? Get to that car, you idiot. Of course, it's working. Now get away and go straight to their headquarters. We'll follow them. Put your foot down on that throttle. It's 
down flat now. Stop him with your gun. What is that infernal machine? Can Chuck and Dickie have invented another bomb site? At any rate, poor Chuck doesn't remain long at liberty. Will Ivan Shark's men add another murder to their long list of crimes? Be sure to see Burning Bomber, next week's exciting chapter of Captain Midnight. in the face of fate, Captain Midnight carries the fight to the enemy. Ivan Shark impersonates him, and Midnight prevents a disastrous coup by discovering the ruse. But then, on the trail of the gang, he meets his doom. Success. When you went over that cliff, we thought you were a goner. Yeah, I'm ashamed of myself. I should have stayed farther back. Are the government men waiting? I reckon they are, but we passed them in nothing flat while they're picking themselves up. I must see them at once. Well, let that gang continue to think I'm done for. Spread the news across the front page of the evening papers. Now back to town and mum's the word. This is wonderful news. I want to congratulate you men on your good work. We try oh, right. 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 While the investigators are running around in circles, we'll strike a solid blow at airplane production. I still think we're flirting with dynamite, leaving Joyce and Mr. Edwards here. But this is the last place they'd suspect. It won't be for long. If my plan works, I'll make contact with the Sharks outfit immediately. Well, junk or no, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'm a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are, Cap. All in working order. My rangefinder. See here, Captain. I won't permit it to be used for your wild scheme. <laughs> There's nothing to get excited over. This isn't your rangefinder. Mud used your model merely as a pattern. This is of no value. A jumble of cogs and wheels. That's right. I ruined a couple of alarm clocks, but it's a work of art. <laughs> it fooled me completely. How will you attempt to use it? For months, Ivan Shark and his gang have been willing to commit any crime to get their hands on your invention. I'm giving them the opportunity. That copy is useless. How will they know it until it's too late? It fooled you. It sounds good, if it works. I think it will. Have you called off your operators at the garage? Oh, yes, and it looks encouraging. 
They're open for business again. What do you want? Nothing from you. I want to talk to the owner of this outfit. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the owner. Ah, quit stalling. I'm speaking of Ivan Shark. I've got something he wants bad. If he pays on the line, I'll deliver. You don't mean that? Yeah. The Edwards range finder. Now get hold of him quick. I'm as hot as a cannibal's dinner. If he won't deal, I'll find another market. Wait. Wait, I'll see what he says. Number six calling S1. S1 answering in person. Go ahead, number six. Man here claims he has Edward's range finder. Offers it for price. Interested? If authentic, yes. How much is he asking? Answer. Here, let me talk to him. Listen, Mr. Shark. This is Chuck Ramsey, Captain Midnight's assistant. I'll lay my cards on the table face up. Midnight's death cost me my job, but I'm not going to let it cost me my life, too. I beat it with Edward's invention, and I'll turn it over for ten grand cash on the line. How about it? Don't no, go shut up, that boss. Oh, oh, shut up, all of you. I make decisions here. Good, it's a deal. I'm sending my men over for you. Martel, you and Borgman get over there in a hurry. Bring that man back. Usual method, of course. I'll attend to the arrangements here. Now, hurry. How long will I have to wait? Is he close by? Wait and see. I ain't spilling nothing. You snap your parked right in front of a plug. What of it? There they go. We'll know in a minute if our plan works. Come on, buddy. We've got a car waiting outside. Nothing doing. I'm taking my boat. It's my getaway buggy. Okay, no objection to that. I'll show him the road. You follow. You boys round up that man in the garage. Take him to the Edwards place and wait for me. Yes, sir. Well, which way do I go? Get on Highway 66. 66 it is. I'll admit you're clever, but those cars are nowhere in sight. How do you expect to follow them? The trail is plain. Look. I apologize. We're changing cars, buddy. Fast. Oh, nothing doing. Oh, you're going to force me to get nasty and lose your ten grand. Get in that other car, quick. Well, buddy, you've seen enough. From now on, you're playing blind man's bluff. You were right, Major. I'm not as clever as I thought I was. They outfoxed us. Well, we still have a chance. Chuck may get away and... Uh... We can't wait. We must try something else. What have you in mind? A plan to use Ivan Shark's own weapons to lead us to his hideout. I'll explain as we go. You won't be able to see me. The arrangement has been well tested. <laughs> now for business. I understand you have something to sell. Something is right. It's worth millions. Well, that's beyond the point. You made a price. Deliver the goods and the money is yours. If Captain Midnight hadn't been bumped off, you wouldn't have money enough to buy that. His misfortune is my gain. works? No. Don't you? We'll find your secret if it has any. Here's your payment. No need to count it. 
I rarely make a mistake. How do I get out of here? My men will show you. All right, kid, follow him. breaking our necks to get? Looks phony to me. Ten thousand dollars thrown away. Oh, Fury, don't jump to conclusions. I've lost nothing, I assure you. Maybe we did him in. No, I've seen a lot like that. There, what did I tell you? Fury seems to think this thing is worthless. Now, after looking it over, I'm inclined to agree with her. How about it, Fang? What did he expect to gain? A trail to our hideout, of course. What else? Load our large bomber with all it will carry. At five precisely, the Acme air plant will go into the sky. You're the boss. Here we go. I'm not going to waste much more time on you. I don't know nothing, I tell you. You know where Edward's invention was taken. Unless you tell me where it is, you'll spend the rest of your life in prison. Well, I can't tell you what I don't know. Well, I'm vain enough to think that if the shark is clever enough to impersonate me, I can impersonate him. Watch the door, will you, Mud, so that I'm not interrupted. Joyce, take your father to his room. I don't want any witnesses to what is about to happen. What are you going to do? Shut up. Men, you know what I want. Your method doesn't interest me. Fair enough. He'll talk or else. I'm ready, my man. How do I look, Icky? Great suffering tomcats. If I had a gun, I'd pop you. <laughs> well, next time, don't doubt my ability. Out of my way. All right, buddy. Start chirping. We're not fooling. I, I can't talk, fellas. Honest, I can't. If I do, I'll be killed. All right, we'll have to give it here. <laughs> now, whatever happens, Icky, don't butt in. Get away from that man or I'll blast you. Do it, you fool. You'll have the whole crowd on us. Boys, that was a humdinger. I'll bet it worked. It worked perfectly. All we can do now is wait for results. Hurry up, boys. Get those bombs on. You know how the chief is if we're late. I knew you'd save me, boss. I didn't tell him nothing, honest. Never mind the gab. Step on it. We must get to headquarters. There's lots to do. And that means another bombing raid, huh? Come on, Father. Hurry. It's nearly time to take off. So it is. This is one time I don't want to be late. Fang, put that away. Yes, Master. Come on, come on. Get some speed out of this crate. No, I'll do this job myself to make certain. Where's my briefcase with the plans? Well, you had it. Oh, well, get it. Martell, you and Spot are going to tell the chief we're ready. Okay. okay. Damn! You slipped one over on us, Chief. We thought you were in the hideout. We had to get him here, afraid he'd talk. Everything's set. Letter perfect. That date with the Acme airplane plan will be right on the nose. Good. Bombs in place? Yes, sir. As many as you'll carry. Hey, it's five bells. How about the takeoff? At once. All right, get this car out of sight. What's he doing here? We caught him coming out of that cell. Oh, you idiots. My father's in there. Get in there, quick. All ready, boss. Oh, wait a minute. I'm handling this job alone. You alone? Are you can't take a chance. I said alone. You failed me too many times. This job must go through. But, Chief... Throw him in there. I'll send him after the raid. See if they do it, Fury. I'm taking off. All right, get him up. Well, do 
doing it alone is Jake with me. I ain't sure glad I didn't have to go. We better get inside. You! It can't be! You ain't here! Grab him! What is this? Where's that plane I ordered? That's it. That's what's wrong. You took it up a minute ago. What? Sure, we saw you do it. Look for yourself. Tricked again by Captain Midnight. Roll out a pursuit plane. I can still catch him. I must catch him. Yes, sir. The guns are loaded to the hilt. If I fail to bring him down, I'll use them on you. All right, close me up. All right, calling Consolidated Airport. Clear the field. Coming in for an emergency landing. I have to land with a load of bombs. Emergency, clear the field. All right, signing off. tire of foul depredations against the nation? And is Ivan Shark destined for ultimate success? Will he never be tripped in the mesh of his own evil web? You dare not miss Death in the Cockpit, next week's spine-tingling chapter of Captain Midnight. peril, Captain Midnight courageously exposes himself to the wrath of Ivan Shark. He plans a trick to capture the master criminal, but Shark sees through the device and provides a deadly retaliation. Clear the field. Coming in for an emergency landing. I have to land with a load of bombs. Emergency, clear the field. All right, signing off. Him up. No, we'll never find him among the trees. 
That'll radio us what to do. Come on inside. Yes, one calling headquarters. Come in, headquarters. Gun's jammed. He got away worse luck. Keep all men there. And returning to field at once. Got it, Dad. Everyone waiting for their orders. Signing off. Midnight's helper. He won't sacrifice him. Go and get him out of the cell. Bring him in. We might learn something. Well, we'll take him. See if he made it. He's gone. He's gone. Got away clean. Well, he can't be far. Get after him, all of you. You admit the hideout must be near the landing field. Why not take a force of men and crash it? And sacrifice Chuck? Not a chance. Atta boy, Cap. Quiet, Icky. Be patient, Major. All right, I'll wait. But you'll have to do something to quiet Edwards. He put up a terrible yell about being moved. And Joyce is afraid of another shock. I can't handle him. I'll go right over. Where are they hidden? Well, Mud will show you. And how? It's an empty joint. Icky. Now look, Major, don't worry. We'll beat them yet. Well, I'm beginning to doubt it. And hurry back. Come on, Mud. I'll get you over there in three shakes of a lamb's tail. Bye-bye, Mage. Mage? Thanks for the lift. I'm all right from here. They have a phone. Hello, Major Steele speaking. Major, this is Chuck Ramsey. Well, you got away all right. By the skin of my teeth. Is Captain Albright there? No, he just left. Where are you? At a grocery store at 208th and Turnpike Road. I know plenty where the Sharks hideout is and everything. Fine, my boy. You stay right there under cover. I'll pick you up myself. Swell, Major. I won't move an inch away from this spot. Yes, sir? Albright's man has escaped. Says he can lead us right to the hideout. I'm going to bring him in myself. It's too bad Captain Albright left before this news came in. He'll likely return before I do and have him wait. This time we're going to strike in earnest. I hope so, sir. Of course, the makeup is perfect, but coming to government headquarters is too much, if you ask me. I didn't ask you. Follow orders. Hold it, Borgman. Look at that. Now stay awake. If everything goes right, I should be out in five minutes. I won't be long, Icky. I just want to smooth down Mr. Edwards and reassure Joyce. Now, I don't know about the first, but that last job would be a pleasure. Icky, keep your mind on your work. Why, Mr. Edwards, you shouldn't be here. Your orders were not to show yourself outside your bungalow. I know, I know. But I'm not a prisoner. I'm here to get my model for Major Steele. I insist upon it. But just a minute, sir. Major Steele isn't here, and the model is locked in the vault. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you're ill, sir. I'll get a doctor. No, no. Get someone to take me home. You were right. I shouldn't have come. Take me home, please. Alan, you'll have to take Mr. Edwards home. All right, Lieutenant. I'll be glad to help. I'll have him there on the jiffy. Come on, sir. Get set, Slim. They fell for it. I 
I assure you, Mr. Edwards, we're nearing the end of the trail. Please be patient. You've been telling me that all along, but I don't believe it. I don't believe it. There, there, Dad. He'll be all right. I've explained everything. Fine. Well, I must hurry along. Major Steele's waiting for me. I'll keep in touch. Don't leave him alone for a minute. Don't worry. There'll be two of us here all the time. Good. There's the captain now, just leaving the house. Shall I catch him for you? No, no, it doesn't matter. I'm too ill. Take me home. Here we are, Mr. Edwards. Wait. Don't take me in. It'll only frighten my daughter. Are you sure you'll be all right? Oh, quite all right. Thank you. Give me that towel, quick. All right? Oh, perfect. Now, I set the stage for you. All you have to do is deliver. Now, go and bring both of them. It's a cinch. Come on, boys. Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, Captain. I have good news. Major Steele is going to pick up Chuck. Well, that is good news. Say, hey, that's great news. I knew they couldn't hurt that pie face. He's tough. <laughs> well, would you like to wait in Major Steele's office, Captain? They should be here shortly. Thanks, Lieutenant. Come on, Eggie. Now we can relax. Gosh, old lady fingers. Things is picking up. We're a cinch now. They won't try anything with these two as hostages. I'm taking no chances. We'll be prepared for them if they do try anything. Slim, step on it. Chuck! Hiya, oh, yeah, Cap. Gee, it's good to see you again. Did they treat you rough? <laughs> well, not rough enough. I managed to get away. <laughs> you did a great job, Captain. You can lead us right to the spot. Oh, Chuck, old boy, put her there. You're a hero. <laughs> now we can raid the place in full force so that none of the gang can escape. It'll take a lot of men, but we've got them this time. <laughs> Hello, Major Steele. What? We didn't have a chance, Major. They shot without warning. Weren't you able to follow them or see the direction they took? No chance to follow. We were out cold. All right, stay there. I'll send an ambulance. Now what's the matter? Well, I've got Edwards and Joyce again. But they won't have them for long. We'll attack at once. Wait a minute, Major. That's impossible right now. It'd bring certain death to them. We'll have to wait. I've followed your advice up to now against my own judgment. Allowed you to have your own way. Chuck knows where that hideout is, and we're attacking in force. But they'll kill them both if you do. Then they must die in the line of duty. For the sake of the country, that gang must be destroyed. I'm sorry, Captain. Yes, sir? Lieutenant, we're organizing a raiding squad at once. These are the orders. Round up all operatives in the district. Cars to carry them. Load them with tear gas, machine guns, and everything necessary for a siege. Now, see how quickly you can carry out my orders. Where's the captain and Chuck? Who? You heard what I said. Where'd they go? You got me there, Mage. They disappeared just like that. And you will decode your plans of the range finder for me, or I'll destroy you and your plans, too. Then the government can never benefit from it. And neither will you. I'll do nothing to help you hinder the defense of my country. <laughs> Patriotic boss! So you won't ask your father to talk, huh? No, I won't. Thanks. I just wanted to hear your voice again. Gag or swim. We'll see if you love your country more than your daughter. My daughter. I thought you would. Bob Bell, tell him to proceed no further with the girl unless Mr. Edwards fails in his task. Come on, Barman, get him to the desk. All right, get him there. Come on, hurry. Well, there are two ways in the mine shaft and that secret gate over there. Either way leads to their meeting room. It's around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. 
stay here on guard. If you hear a shot, come on the run. in the tunnels now. We've taken one of his stooges. Excellent. Good. We're waiting for him. Any orders? We'll get a bomber ready and stand by. As soon as my job is finished, we're leaving this place. All of us. Right. Said to roll out a bomber for a getaway. Spotter. Yes, sir. Take Edwards out to join his daughter in Fury. Guard them well. Wait for me. Come on, Edwards. Captain Midnight is in the passages. What? what? Now remember, I'm letting him in here, but you're not to kill him. I want to finish him my way. You better let us bomb fast. You, you know do what as I say. Martell, have you fixed everything? All ready. Just throw that switch and everything starts. All right. Now, two of you take that out. I don't want to ruin it. The rest of you come with me. Will Fury Shark and her father's men be able to escape the law? You can't afford to miss Scourge of Revenge, next week's dynamic chapter of Captain Midnight. Final sacrifice to capture Ivan Shark, dauntless Captain Midnight throws himself into the hands of the master criminal. But Shark eludes capture, and Midnight's fate is sealed. Let me finish him. I said I finish him my way. Now get out of here, all of you. 
jury, the plan. Now, I'll sign all of you. I'll follow immediately. The place goes up in three minutes. Come on, get out of here. Come on, jury. jittery. I need you to keep them in line. Now do as I say. Get in the car. safe enough. All right, now we can go. Things have changed a lot, Mr. Shark. Now we're taking you in. A lot of good it will do you. Who's that? Great suffering cats. That's Midnight Stooge just passed us. What's up? Get some speed out of this crate and we'll find out. Major Steele, this is Chuck Ramsey. Captain Midnight has captured Ivan Shark. He's flying him in. He wants you to get some men and meet him. Swell, Major. I'll meet you at the field. Bring plenty of men. Captain Midnight escaped. He captured the boss and is flying them in. He just phoned for a bunch of government men to meet them. do is get my father away. Get in. With millions of dollars behind you, you've been beaten by loyal Americans working not for wealth, but for love of country. Beautiful and patriotic, but very uninteresting to me. All right, Major, I'm through. Lock him up. There's no hurry, Captain. I feel sure he'll talk before he leaves here. You wouldn't bet on that, would you? No soap yet. I'm betting they got nothing out of him. Pardon 
threaten me. There isn't any law in your constitution that says that a man can't have a drink of water when he's thirsty, is there? No, but I wish there were. Help yourself. Thanks. Everything's ready. It's a cinch. Only two men covering the entrance. All clear and back. All right, let him have it. Stop that infernal whispering. I can't stand it. I'll talk. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Get your witnesses in here. Unlock that door. Get Lieutenant Clark in here. I'll phone for stenographer. I thought you'd talk. <laughs> Truck. It's a frame up, and we let him get away with it. Not yet, he hasn't. That truck will stand out like a sore thumb. Come on, Burns. A large truck came out of the alley. Which way did it go? That way, sir. Get to the car. Walter, you stay here. You're after, sir? Yeah, that's the one. All right, Governor, the car's waiting. Let's scram. Not yet. Our job is only half done. Now, listen, this is what I want you to do. He's bound to be in on the deal. I'll take him in and question him and report to you in the morning. Right. Take the men with you. I'm going straight home. All right, get in. Alan, you go with Captain Albright. I'll drive myself. Yes, sir. Bunch. Oh, it's all the excitement. We haven't done anything. Don't stall. What have you done with Ivan Shark? Who? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I believe different. Now look, fella, you got us all wrong. We're just delivering a cargo of cigarettes. Oh, another cargo of cigarettes, huh? Take him in the car. Marcel, take the truck. Father Major steals an old, old man. Well, then I'll be an old, old man, too. Plastic will take care of that. Watch me, I'll prove it. Yeah, you can have your coat back. Now, uh, let me warn you. Any attempt to use my papers will only lead to your capture. Let us worry about that. It's Borgman, dear. Open the door. Well, did you get anything? Oh. <laughs> It's all right, Borgman. Your reaction is flattering. I really have to hand it to you, boss. This is everything he had on him. This is enough. Give them to Fury. Borgman, 
I want you and Martell to go with me just in case. Yes, sir. Father, you're a wonder. Thanks, my dear. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Major. Good morning, Good morning Lieutenant. Good morning, men. Any messages? Captain Albright phoned several times, sir, from the Edwards hideout. I'm to call him as soon as you arrive. Uh, don't bother. I have other plans. Come in, Lieutenant. Alan, take the board. Yes, sir. Now, close the door and lock it. I must go on a secret mission. No one must learn of it. I trust you, Lieutenant. I understand, sir. I must fly to Washington with the Edwards rangefinder. Get it from the vault and hurry. Yes, sir. What's up, Lieutenant? Uh... Don't get excited, Dad. No one's trying to steal your invention. Of course not, Mr. Edwards. As soon as Major Steele arrives in his office, I'll go and get it for you. I want it at once. Right now. I don't trust anyone. Right now, I want it. I think he wants it. All right, Mr. Edwards, I'll phone again. Now, now, Dad. Hello. Yes, Captain, he's here. Hold the line. Hello, hello. Oh, hello, Major, this is Albright. Oh, hello, Captain Albright. I'm with Mr. Edwards, and he's worried about his invention. Wants me to bring it here. You'll have to stall him off. That invention mustn't leave this office. Impossible, Major. His reason's at stake. I'm coming right over for it. I'll be there in ten minutes. Will you have it ready? All right. I'll attend to it. I'll be back in a few minutes, Mr. Edwards, and I'll have your invention with me. I'll believe it when I see it. Please hurry. Of course. Well, where's the rangefinder? Sorry, sir. I've forgotten the new combination. You have... What? Of all the idiotic things, a trusted government employee forgets the combination. <laughs> Where well, are you going to stand there staring at me? Do something. I was trying to say, sir, there's a copy of the new combination in your desk drawer. Oh, 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 yes, so there is. Well, hurry up and get it. Why, well, it's gone, sir. Well, perhaps I have it here. Here it is, right here, sir. I'll hurry up or I'll miss my plane. What's the matter with him? He never acted like that before. Government business. He's worried. Worried? Huh. Acts like a different man altogether. We're in the jam. Albright will run right into the chief. Don't worry. He'll be fooled like the rest of us. Anyway, I'll fix his car so we can't follow. Just in case. Well, you took your time, didn't you? I had to, sir. The new combination. Oh, shut up and give it to me. Is Major Steele alone? Yes, Captain, but I better... Don't bother. He expects me. Well, what's the matter, Major? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. Hi, uh, you, you startled me. Uh, you can go, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Say, Major, I uh, think you owe me an explanation. Well, I've no time to talk now, Captain. I'm catching a plane for Washington. But surely you're not taking that model. I promised Mr. Edwards I'd return it. We have no time to consider the whim of a crazy old man. Get away from that door. I'll miss my plane. I'm uh, sure you will, Major. Are you crazy to unlock that door? Not a chance, Ivan Shark. So the ring tripped you again, huh? You took it off, but the mark's still there. Now I'll take that model. You better go in there, Lieutenant. Lock the door. Well, break it open. Ah, break it open.
Don't worry, boss. I fixed Albright's car. He'll only follow for a few minutes. Good boy. He's gaining. Are you sure you fixed him? Certain. It won't be long now. Look back, boss. You might see something. Have Joyce and her father finally escaped the clutches of Ivan Shark? Or is there something suspicious about the way Major Steele is acting? See it all unfold in the fatal hour, the final chapter of Captain Midnight. <laughs> in his purpose, courageous Captain Midnight at last rounds up the dangerous Ivan Shark gang. But with one last thrust, Shark escapes, and Midnight once more is cast into jeopardy. He's gaining. Are you sure you fixed him? Certainly. It won't be long now. Back, boss, you might see something. Good work. That's what I call a nippy, Chief. They won't have a clue to follow. Radio the Greer hideout. Why radio? We're heading there now, aren't we? No. I have a greater plan. Do as I say. S1 calling number 17. S1 calling number 17. Number 17 answering. Go ahead. Have operators 9, 10, and 5 meet me at Edwards' hideout at once. Answer. I'm worried. Please don't attempt anything more, Father. Do as I say. Signing off. Does that mean we're going there, too? Yes. Drive there at once. All right, you hurting. The three of you get going. I told you he wouldn't come back. They're stealing my invention. No one's trying to steal it. Captain Albright has promised. It's Major Steele. There. I told you Albright wouldn't come. Dad. Will one of you let him in? Well, sure. Oh, howdy, Major. We were expecting Captain Albright. Anything happen? Yes, something important. I must see Mr. Edwards at once. Good morning, Major. We were expecting... I know, Captain Albright. I came in his place. Uh, we have great news for you. The government has accepted your father's invention, and it will mean millions for him. Did you hear? Your rangefinder has been accepted. Of course. Why shouldn't it be? But I want it here with me. I'm afraid success has come too late. Why, he'll be all right. Uh, now, you go and pack a grip for him. We're flying to Washington at once. Oh, that's impossible. My father uh, Nonsense. It won't harm him. And you're going with him. A doctor, too. Uh, Captain Albright has a government plane waiting. Go ahead. It's all right if Captain Albright is for it. Very well, then. I'll only be a minute to pack. Chuck, you look after father. For sure. 
Captain, I'm sorry about Never mind about that. Where are the men? They're out looking for you. Any work from Major Steele? I just phoned his apartment. He hasn't been there all night. You think, Bank? I know. Ivan Shark's gang have him a prisoner. What? That's right. We must find that hideout and attack. Get me the Edwards bungalow. Yes, hurry, man. I was a fool not to go there first. Chuck, bring father. All right, Major, we're ready. Excellent. Now, you boys watch the place here until Captain Albright contacts you. You can trust us, Major. Never mind that. We must hurry. It'll only take a moment. Hello? Oh, Captain Albright. Hello, Joyce. Are the men still there? Certainly. They've never left for a minute. Are you phoning from the airfield? Airfield? What makes you say that? Well, Major Steele said you were waiting for us there. We were just about to leave with him when your call came in. Listen, Joyce, try and control yourself. That man isn't Major Steele, it's Ivan Shark in disguise. Stall him, do anything you like, but don't leave. I'll be there as soon as possible. Is anything wrong? Bloody Ivan Shark is at the Edwards place now. Uh, we must hurry, come along. I've changed my mind. We're not going now. Perhaps later. I'll not allow you to throw away millions. You're going now. Come on. Chuck! Empty! This is Ivan Shark! We could, sir, honest, we did. And hell, there was a mob of them, an army. All right, all right, all right. Unless we find out where he's taken them, we're beaten. We've got one chance left. Come with me. And you're the only one equipped to handle the job. You bet we are. And I promise that within ten minutes, every road out of this area will be blocked. They won't get by. Great. I'll handle the airfields and air patrols. You can reach me at Steele's office. Fine. All right, boys. Get me the radio room. Get him in. Quite a little gathering. You're clever, Ivan Shark. But watch out that your cleverness doesn't trip you up. I'll be extra careful. What are you going to do, Father? I'm going to get out of this makeup. You go ahead. There isn't a chance, Major. And I am helpless. Oh, it's all my fault, Major. I should have seen through his disguise. Your fault? Nothing. I felt as though I was looking into a mirror. But we are in a bad way, Joyce. Not as bad as it might be. Captain Albright knows we're in the shark's hands. Then there is hope. Well, suppose one of us locates a place. Uh, what then? Report back here. The police are organized and are waiting for the call. Now scatter and report back here not later than 5 o'clock sharp. It'll take time to locate them. Meanwhile, Major Steele and the others may be murdered. Oh, I'm sure they're not. Now, as for finding the hideout, it's a process of elimination. You each have a certain place to go, and we'll check them off one by one as you report back. Here's a 
one of your bunch. Make the most of it. <laughs> Boy, that first step was a pimp. How did you find us? Where's Captain Albright? Oh, he's waiting for me to report. What a washout I am. I wasn't even careful. Oh, well, Lieutenant, hit the lights. There's no use to mourn in the dark. Well, see, I know Chuck. He'd be here unless... Unless he's detained, right? He's gained his objective. He's discovered the hideout of the gang. And that means the Greer place. Sure, I got it. If he hadn't found it, he'd be here with the rest of us. Well, that means they've got him. What are we waiting for? Let's get going. Uh, hold on, men. Hold on. Not so fast. This is our one big chance to round up the whole gang in one scoop. But it would be foolish to make a move before it's completely dark. So, Burns, you and your partner get over to the chief's office. The police are waiting. Get out there, surround the place, and keep undercover until you hear my gun signal. Say, but you're not going alone. No, but uh, Captain Midnight is, and you're going to drive him. Okay, let's get going. I hope they hold their fire until they see the whites of my eyes. Uh, all right, men, shove off. Oh, well, Lieutenant, you'll be in charge of the office while we're gone, and remember, this to everyone. I understand, sir. You wait here, I'm going over the wall. And leave me here all alone? <laughs> it's not for long, you're to guide the police. Now sit still and don't let your teeth chatter too loud. If it does have what their government expected it to, it's worth all the trouble we've gone to. Oh, hello, Fury. Ready? Yes, it's dark enough now. Well, I'm almost ready to go. Almost? It's a little unfinished business. We're our friends, the enemy. Forget them. Let's go. And have them starve to death? Why, Fury, I never knew you had such a cruel streak in your nature. <laughs> I'm waiting for word of the plane. As soon as it's ready, we'll leave. Here, Slim. Try this up. I warned you. I warned everybody. But no one listened to me. Now my invention is gone forever. I can't hear a sound. Maybe they're gone. It's not likely. Ah! It's the boss's glove. I know it anywhere. Midnight. Shh, not so loud. My only hope is to surprise them. Surely, man, you'll not try to capture them alone? I hadn't intended to, but you're in a trap of death. I ought to know. I've been in it. I'll have to tackle them. Don't try it, man. It means sure death. Come on, Father. Let's go. Oh, patience, Fury. Patience. Turn on the loudspeaker. We'll see how our friends are faring. There is a chance. Remove that grating, and we could at least get Joyce and her father away. It's bars of chilled steel are embedded in cement. It would take hours. Hope should be here soon. I'll reconnoiter and won't attack unless necessary. Be on your guard. We'll get midnight, put him in with the others. Then we'll leave at once. Any help that comes will come too late. Places. Gary, guard this with your life. Okay, Borgman, that's all the bombs she'll hold. Okay, you can take those back. We'll get the chief. I'm anxious to get out of here.
sounds like heavy machinery. Oh, Dad, I'm frightened. Sit down, Joyce, sit down. Shark. He's in the control room out cold. We'd better go in and handcuff him before he regains consciousness. Then your men can pick him up. Oh, what, uh, Chuck? Will you stay with the folks? Hey, open up! My hands are full! Ah! Oh. Uh, what about the rest of the gang? They're all rounded up, I'm sure. Help! <laughs> it's mud. <laughs> oh, careful there, Cap. I, I ruined my chassis. How did it work out? Well, all rounded up. I took care of the Spitfire and she was plenty tough. Uh, uh, There's your model and your plans. Good boy, Mud. I'll send Chuck right after you. Come on, Major. Oh! Oh! Chuck, uh, give Vicky a hand. He's out of commission. <laughs> Mr. Edwards, here are your plans and model safe and sound. At last. And due to your efforts, Captain Albright. You're wrong, Miss Edwards. I'm sure the captain will agree with me when I say that our thanks are due to Captain Midnight alone. <laughs> <laughs> 